Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. However you happen to be watching and or listening to this, I want to welcome you to another episode of the Gaming Circle Podcast. Episode 67, Deeper and Deeper, we're, we're, this episode is called, and I think you'll find out why in a moment. <laughs> I am your host, Mr. K. Asante, TKO Asante on Twitter, Xbox, PlayStation, all the places you want to find me. And of course, I am joined by my co-host, the slanderous one, the conspiracy theorist, the yes, Sonic sir. Judas, the Sega apologist, the developer, Mr. Evan Born Sonic. And What's going down? All at the same time. Yes. <laughs> What's and, going on? Uh, man? Sonic World, Lost World. We're getting. We're going to get gem. into it, sir. We're going to get into it. That's a, it's a whole different conversation. We're getting into that one, but w- we will not stop right now because we are so excited to introduce, you know, a, a gentleman who's who's who whose presence looms large in the gaming industry. And if, you, if you've watched our show or any of these shows, for frankly, you know this man's name, so he needs no introduction. Mr. Jez Corden from Windows Central, senior editor. How are you doing this, this afternoon, sir? Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, sorry, sorry I had to delay a week. But, uh, oh, last come on week now. Was... Life happens. Life, <laughs> it happens to us all. It happens to yeah. us all. Don't, don't even worry about uh, it. We're just happy uh, you're here. I'm happy to be here, man. Um, you know, a big fan of you both, and you oh, know, you do you so much. cool stuff. And uh, I am feeling a little bit hungover today. Mm, um, mm-hmm, and if you yeah. listen to, yeah, we heard you on Xbox Two yesterday. You yeah. having some fun? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Absolutely. I'm suffering for it now, but you know, it's all all fun and games, all fun and games. Appreciate you being here. It's going to be be a fun time. You are amongst friends, sir. So we, we will have a great time today. And before we get started, I will already see a bunch of folks already in the chat, a bunch of folks already joining us live on, on, on the stream. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, if you end up liking the show, please do consider hitting that like button, possibly joining, uh, uh, subscribing to the channel as we march along to our 1,000 subscribers. We're a little channel here, so we appreciate uh, stars and legends like Jez Corden joining us for this wonderful conversation this Saturday. Thank you for being here, Mr. Mr. Joanna Dark. Uh, Outbreak Podcast, I see you there, Mr. John Wolf, the, the, the legendary Gerald Mack. Thank you guys so much all for being here. But let's get started and let's start this how we always do with, with, some, with some games that we have been playing. And I will save Mr. Everborn Saga for last because I think there's a reckoning about to happen with me and him. All right. This, you, this I, you're, not, you're not ready to have that conversation, but we We're will. about to have that conversation, brother. We'll get there. <laughs> but we will start with our honored guest, sir. What has been keeping you busy this week? Are you one of the? Are you, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there there will definitely be definitely be some, some Overwatch talk in here. But are you a grazer? You know, one who dips in many many pots, or are you one oh, who just man. you know like married to that one game? What, what what's 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 been keeping you busy? It's uh, it's it's hard to say, like mm. because becoming a writer of gaming has very very aggressively changed my gaming habits. Mm. Um. You know, I used to be I used to be a guy who'd be like, yeah, I want a game that lasts hundreds of hundreds of hours and I'll stick to that one game and I'll play nothing else. I used to be that guy. But since like now I'm writing about games and like I have to keep up with what's trending pretty much. It's sort of like I have to often just drop games without finishing them. And I, I barely ever finish games anymore unless I'm reviewing them. And I don't even I barely even review games anymore because I've just been so busy with other stuff. So. I tend to gravitate more and more towards games you can just pick up and play for 20 minutes and then put down. So, yeah, I've been playing a ton of Overwatch for that reason. Um, it's, it's just great to just pick up, play for like 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes or whatever and have a couple of matches, get a couple of battle pass levels and then jump out. So, uh, you know, big Overwatch fan since it launched. It's been my go-to shooter for years now. What are your um, feelings on the 1.5? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I I was pretty upset with it at first. Not gonna lie, I was like, man, they're removing the tank, which you know, uh, Wrecking Ball is my main, and he's sort of not very great as a main tank, I think. So and that Blizzard hasn't reworked him or anything, so it kind of disrupted my play style a lot, but. Now I've sort of gotten used to it and sort of adapted to the changes and I sort of get it now and I'm loving it actually. So I've sort of, I've sort of gone full circle on this stuff, but, um, but so yeah, you, you went from, uh, they shouldn't have 1.5 it to now you get why they 1.5 it. Well, I think they should have called it overwatch 2.0. Mm. So then at least it's like, 
they, they can so it's say like a software it's a, iteration it's a, rather than an yeah, actual yeah, iteration yeah. of the yeah yeah I hear you but, understood yeah. but this is Bobby Kotick man it's all Bobby Kotick Bobby Kotick mm-hmm. loves his retail yeah. you know his retail options and he's like we, we need to slap a number on this so we can stick it on store shelves and even though it doesn't make sense for the franchise and whatever but whatever it seems to have paid off because they hit 25 million players in a week so you know <laughs> pretty I mean, much blew it, everything it, else it, away so uh will it have the staying power i don't know will people get bored of it will the live service be up to snuff will it halo halo infinite itself we don't know yet but wow it's so a verb far, now halo infinite yourself damn yeah <laughs> yeah but uh i'm enjoying it so far and you know i i'm blizzard fanboy so I can't, oh, I can't oh yeah oh yeah kind of have to from way it. back clearly yes yeah, yeah you know wake me up when they when they introduce that campaign then i'll be interested i want to see the campaign of overwatch that'd be awesome I, i've been waiting for that for quite yeah. A time. yeah i'm um i'm really intrigued by that whole sort of idea of having a campaign in overwatch um i have i mean they've they've shown off some stuff they want to do with it like uh there'll be special abilities you can unlock and talent trees and all that kind of stuff like if you go if you look around on the internet there's some of the abilities they've shown off like torbjorn gets like flamethrower turrets for example and genji gets the ability to like slash multiple people at once and you know it's it looks really cool and it looks kind of like they they're sort of going towards a sort of left for dead kind of motif with it where instead of fighting zombies you battle omnics you know the robots and stuff but i mean if it's if it ends up being good then uh, you know i'll be more than happy with it but i'm i'm also sort of i've also sort of you know alarm bells are ringing because where is it yeah <laughs> it's yeah. sort of a wall isn't it yeah. so uh that doesn't sort of that doesn't f- instill me with confidence but i guess we'll uh, have to wait and see is is Mr. Everborn Saga playing video games in the background while we're podcasting? I heard he that music, sir. Turning something on and didn't realize <laughs> the volume was still on. <laughs> just just clowning you, sir. But is that what you? That's your main main game you've been playing, Jazz? Uh, the other game I've been playing is uh, Persona Five, which ah. you know, you've got you've got playing on, up on the yes. screen now. Um, I played Persona Two and Three as a kid. I I own them both on PlayStation Two, and I've I've told this story Answer before, this but point, no. It yeah, they're, right now. they're worth it's, some money. I was like, yeah, oh snap, I'm, I'm rich. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got like pristine copies of Persona 3 and Persona 4 on, on PlayStation 2. Nice. But, but um, I didn't have a PlayStation 2 to play them on. Like my PlayStation 2 broke before I could actually finish either of them. So for me, it's sort of like almost going back to my teens and, and picking up where I left off. You PlayStation know? 3 grill? <laughs> What'd you say? Sorry, uh, you said you, you broke your PS2 and you don't have the, the George Foreman PS3 grill because that one plays PS2 games. Oh, no, I, I, I no, I couldn't afford that. shit. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> oh, we love to swear on this yeah. podcast. Well, when, they, when they said you need $600, you were like, No, thank uh, you. Sir. <laughs> yes, you are allowed to swear. We usually oh, get yes. two swears yep. per show. Yeah, okay. uh, it's a special then, occasion. And- let her rip. It's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll put the exclu- I, we'll put I, the, the, the the explicit on there. You know, it's fine. I will remember that. <laughs> we are I'll, try, I'll try. I'll try and not because you know. No worries. We, we no are worries. considering getting the uh, gas bleeper. Oh yeah, that'd be that'd be fun and useful. And then you can swear all you want. Just keep everything out. Yeah, that, we, we're thinking about that one. Yes, indeed. Brilliant. But okay, so Persona two and three, and now you're 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 playing what five on Xbox? Yeah, I'm playing five on Xbox. I played a little bit on cloud as well. Mm. Um, so you know going backwards and forwards and stuff like that i uh i I really enjoy it but i also kind of feel like it's you know it's not going to be for everyone given that it's you know millions and millions of hours long (laughs) and uh it's also kind of like i even i'm thinking like oh my god am i going to be able to fit this in you know around Mm -hmm. around my my gaming lifestyle if you want to call it i guess but um I'm sort of like I'm just sort of because it, it's it's segmented by day, right? So it's like you play you play a day and then you know you have a day cycle. Some stuff happens and then it's the next day. So I'm just sort of trying to get in a day here and there. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I uh, I think it's awesome, stylish as hell, and it's it's sort of scratching that term based JRPG. With style. That is that is indeed. Yeah. It's dripping with style always. Definitely. Even the control yeah. schemes and stuff, very cool. I love the menus. Yeah, it's awesome. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. 
Yes. Hey, I'm a little <laughs> intimidated by the game just for the same reason you said, Jez. I like it took me four months to work my way through Elden Ring, right? Uh, <laughs> just looking at the amount of time that I have available, uh, you know, for the hobby. And it's like, if I start this, I can basically forget about everything else until February. So I'm kind of like dipping the toe in on uh, using uh, xCloud on the Steam Deck. And while I play uh, some of the other things that, you know, you can complete quicker, like uh, Plague's Tale, I'm almost done with Deathloop. And then uh, obviously the game of the year, Sonic Frontier. Oh God! Come don't, don't start! Don't start that comment. We're gonna get into that, man. Right. We're gonna get into that. Don't, okay. don't don't prime the pump in such a bad way, good, good sir. Come on now. Right. <laughs> While you're talking, go ahead. Go ahead. Tell tell us all, what what games. Keep keep going. What games? Are you all right. Playing? So um, I'm at this weird place with Deathloop, where uh, while I actually like the game, because these this sort of onslaught of other games just came out, like. Yeah. Gotham Knights, which I don't really care about the 30 FPS thing. I mean, whatever the dev said was stupid, but the game itself, that, I was never sure. mad at that. <laughs> we'll talk about um, that. So there, there's that. Uh, I said I wasn't going to play Modern Warfare until it comes to Game Pass, but that's not happening till at least 2024, it seems 2025. like, or 2025. <laughs> um, so I may have to buy that, but not right now. And then, you know... Um, Plague's Tale, uh, Scorn, uh, now Persona 5. So all these games came out while I was in the middle of Deathloop, and now it feels like a chore to finish it, right? Like, I feel like I'm clocking into work because I want to get to these other games. And it's a weird uh, feeling because if I send it to the backlog, it's never going to get picked up again. That's just how Mm. these things work. Yeah. So... Uh, I, I feel like Deathloop is going to end up being the sacrificial lamb and Persona is going to have to go on hold because it's going to uh, mess up the rest of the schedule. So See, I, uh, You know what? The Persona thing is a very interesting interesting part. I've always thought, like specifically with Persona and like the, the, the Yakuza series, for instance, it's like you're playing a, a glorified demo because I don't care how long you're playing this for, you won't be able to play unless you know life these things you won't be able to play this thing all the way through until it's uh, before it gets out of game pass like you're going to eventually want to buy that thing because it takes that long to and, finish these and, games and and that is probably the plan you know um, what i'm saying yes so and the other thing that i've been putting a lot of time into i don't know if you want to talk about this now um, okay Sonic... fine fine well well you know what real quick uh, same game, uh, as you see on the screen, I've been playing, uh, for, for my audio listens, we, we've been playing Persona 5, right? Uh, I, I, I too have also been partaking in a, a bit of, uh, a bit of, uh, Plague Tale Requiem, but let's, let's prime the pump and talk about this properly, okay? So, uh, uh, Jez, as you may or may not know, you are amongst, uh, uh, uh basically everborn Sega apologist. It's all about Sega. It's all about <laughs> Sonic. All the time. Okay, to the point where you know my love, and and I, and let's be real, I, I like Sega, I, I like Sonic as well, but I have to be against this man. So now I'm 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 regulated to the corner <laughs> of, of of always being opposite to him because he's just too much with his Sega love. <laughs> let me so, let me let me let me put Jez uh-huh. on your side real quick. Oh, okay. okay if if uh, Microsoft were to somehow lose the Activision Blizzard King deal mm-hmm. and pick up Sega instead, I'd be perfectly fine with that. Oh my God! As a matter of fact, if they had to sacrifice ABK for Sega, He'd be I would say that that's a win-win. <laughs> so but anyway, continue. This man is always out here. So so okay, we have a bet going right. And, and shout out to Mr. Boomstick XL. He's out there. He came to me and saying, "Oh, Ragnarok is going to beat uh, uh, Sonic. Is going to beat Sonic Frontiers. Is going to beat Ragnarok two to one." In sales, this this this. I don't agree with the two to one. You see, you see how you're laughing there, Jez. You see what you. That's what I did, right? And then Mr. <laughs> Everborn Saga goes, I don't agree with the two to one, but it'll at least beat. Uh, let, uh, let, me uh, my, well, let me no, explain let me my. Well, no, let me finish. Let me finish. I will let you rebut. <laughs> now, oh no, he's been going through almost every Sonic game, like as an adult now, trying to rekindle that Sonic fire, right? And there are some good ones. Sonic Mania, it was great. 
you know, I'll even say Sonic Generations was great. Uh, after Microsoft's uh, 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 FPS boost and, and resolution and stuff, it plays awesome now on, on the series consoles. It's you freaking it, awesome. Jess. If that's how it, it played initially, it probably would have gotten a different reception, right? But then, of course, there's the Sonic Colors, and there's the this and the that. And he is on the train of, if Sonic Team made it, chances are it's good, right? <laughs> and then he, he basically, they found, I think it was a, a deal last week or something, they found this deal on uh, uh, Sonic Lost World <laughs> and insisted that I play this game. And at the time, I think it was $8. So long story yes, short, less than a morning he's cup been of playing coffee. it. He's been playing it, and he asked that I play it. And I literally played it for the first time last night, for the first time. And I'm, I'm playing footage of me playing it now. Now, I'm playing it between my PC and the old Steam Deck, and it's good on both, like 60 frames per second, you know, really, really smooth. What you're seeing here, footage here, is, is from the PC because, you know, you, you want to record the footage. So I've never even heard Sonic. of this Sonic. Oh, yeah. It, it's a thing. <laughs> Please. It's a thing. Mr. Everborn Saga, how about you start with a prime okay. to pump for us? How'd you so, get to this game? What do you think of this game? I, Go ahead. I saw that John, I have to give the credit here to John Wolf. Yes, I had to John actually, Wolf. big Sonic fan as I am, this one mm -hmm. slipped by the radar, mm -hmm. right? I just, mm -hmm. I, I, I did not know that this was a thing. And I was like, oh, it's probably, and the reason I didn't know it was a thing is because I think it came out for like the Wii U or something. Oh, like and that. by the way, when you see the reviews, like it is, it is globally. Doesn't matter the platform, doesn't matter the outfit, doesn't matter <laughs> whether you're new or you're young, whether you're a veteran or you're a new be on the block. You think this thing okay, is but garbage it, emoji. It let's was continue. ahead of its time, is the problem. So here's the Let, thing. <laughs> Get, here's and this the is thing. made by Sonic Team. Continue yes, so. let me explain. So this um is a game. It came out on the Wii U, I think, and I think that's why it slipped past my radar. But John Wolf said, hey, it's on sale Shout out to uh, John Wolf. On, on Steam for $8. <laughs> and I was like, uh -huh. my caramel macchiatos in the morning are like eight fifty in New York. Mm -hmm. I can go buy a Sonic game and try it out for $8. So I go buy it, I try it, and I'm like, this must be terrible because I never heard of it. And then I'm playing it, and I have never seen a Sonic game designed this way. This on is, that we agree. This on is that 100%. a hundred percent. This is Sonic. This is basically a Sonic designed. Uh, oh, there you go. We're, we're looking at the screen now. It is right? literally. It is uh, the best way to describe it is what, what would you say? Uh, Sonic a la Mario Galaxy. Yes. Right. And so but it, it takes advantage of Sonic's moveset. Uh, so it's not like all globes that you jump to, but they mm -hmm. do play with gravity in that way. So instead they, of a, instead of Mario's circular world, these are all over like, like rectangular worlds that let, allow you space to run and you can round, run all around it for my audio listeners. Yes. You know, run all and, around they, it. But but there are time. those planet style levels if you as it, yep. as you go on. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at this. And the other thing that's, that it took me a while to get into is that there's actually a button that you have to press to run, mm -hmm. which is they've never done this in 30 years of making Sonic games. Mm -hmm. So I didn't Sonic know that. Sonic just runs when you, when you, when you move in this yeah, it's game, based on momentum you have to press normally. a button or you don't run. Right. So mm -hmm. um, that took some getting used to. But if you look mm -hmm. at this level design, it's super interesting, right? It is on not that also, we agree. This is a very interesting game. Look right, <laughs> and I look. At it it runs uh -huh. ultra smooth. Yeah, it is, because it obviously is, it, it's it's a game of an of an older time, and we have better hardware now. So this thing is butter on no, no matter right. what hardware but, you but play it, it on. It it um I think this is the the farthest out that they've tried to do something mm -hmm. different, and I I think competent with with mm -hmm. with the Sonic and Sonic level design since since I don't know right. So okay. this is singular in its um, level design for, for the, the, the 3D adaptation of Sonic. And mm -hmm. I think I, I would love, they swung for the fences. And I think this is what you want to see in, in game design because there are a lot of Sonic games that get very stale. And to me, this is so novel that um, th this... This sort of stands to why the Mario games last so long because they are willing to think outside of the box sure, and change sure. the, give you the, that. the play style. Yeah. And to me, most of the time, it works. Like I am like four hours into this game, 
David uh, Cresson joins us. Welcome, sir. No, no, this is definitely is this not colors? colors? Colors is terrible. <laughs> we're, we don't talk about color. Continue. Uh, but this one is the uh-huh. best uh, Sonic game since Generations. And I'm sorry. On that, I disagree. But it, we will, we'll, we'll, is, look, go ahead. It's really good. Look at this. Okay. Can, can, I, can I rebut, sir? <laughs> you can try, but okay. you're going to be so, wrong. So, so, so. Uh, as you see, this is this is right. my gameplay. I agree with Everborn Saga. Uh, to uh, you a are pretty extent. bad at this, by the way. I just want to add. Well, well, here's the thing. I agree with Everborn Saga to a certain extent. Okay, I agree that this is the most innovative they've ever, like they've ever designed. I agree with that wholeheartedly. The game looks beautiful. The game plays pretty interestingly. How about the music? The, the interesting, the, the level design, the whole nine. Sonic has always been Sonic Team has always been good at the music. All all that, right? My problem with this game, and, the, and, and, and I read the reviews before I even played the game, so I thought this game would be out and out trash. It's not that. It is not trash. It's not. But the problem is the game is fighting what Sonic is actually supposed to be. Like, like Mr. Everborn Saga says, you have to press a button. And Everborn himself didn't even know to press the button when he first started. They don't tell he you. Played this full, yeah, so he played this whole game for like 20, 30 minutes walking Sonic. Right now, I and was like, "What the hell?" Angry, and then you and said, you pull the trigger. The slowest Sonic game I've ever played. Yes, you pull the trigger, and he starts running. And now he's running, but when he's running, he's playing like it, it goes against the game itself because the game wants you to be precise. The game wants you to it's strategic uh, 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 platforming, right? It is very much Mario Galaxy style platforming, and they did a great rendition of it, right? But you put a character who's who's whose whole modus operandi is speed over precision. So this whole game feels like it's fighting against each other. I want to be precise and and climb to that height and find that new, cool, interesting thing here and there. But to do that, you have to walk Sonic, which is totally antithetical to what you're supposed to do with Sonic. Right? You want to run Sonic, but in do- doing that, you, you skip 80% of this world because all the cool, interesting things, you can't touch them. You can't get there. You can't do it. So you have to walk Sonic, which feels weird, and then when you run Sonic, you miss everything. So it's a great looking, great playing game. It should have been with Knuckles. It should have been with Tails. It should have been with somebody who promotes intricacy rather than speed. Because Sonic doesn't work here. You know what I else? Think. You know what else I love about this game? They mm-hmm. don't force you to play with all the other Sonic spin-off characters. It's just Sonic. See, but, but and they're not pay, making you play as weird alligators <laughs> and all these other dumb See, this characters. Is my thing. And, and, and anybody who's heard me and, si- and Everborn go back and forth, that has always been my argument. Leave all those weird characters behind. But see, had you made them useful in the gameplay perspective and say, okay, Sonic is the one that runs real fast. This other one is the one that climbs real well. This other one is the one that can jump, right? Gameplay-wise, Sonic, Knuckles, Tails. You should have made this game like number one for one of the other characters whose other specialty is this world rather than the running. Because the running makes, like, it, makes it kind of crap. I feel like you're telling Sonic to shut up and dribble. Why can't he do that? No, I'm telling I'm telling I'm what saying I'm saying here? the Sonic team made an amazing clone of Mario Galaxy and then ruined it by putting Sonic in it. Wow. <laughs> because his because Sonic's style is speed, and this game is all about substance, and you can't I, I, have I, substance I, and speed. I think you're in the bag for Mario, sir. No, no, just, I'm sorry. Because yeah. this is a this is this is this is Mario Galaxy level world creation. And I agree with you. It's absolutely amazing how they did this. It's really Sonic cool. I has actually, been lacking. I actually level replayed design Galaxy. Like this. I actually replayed Galaxy after playing this just to remind myself of how good Galaxy was and how good this is. You're right, right? They did a great job. But the problem here again is you want to jump and you want to traverse that high height and you want to get that crazy ring that seemingly you can't get to. But to do that, you have to slow down. And this is not a character that you're supposed to be slowing down with. It feels kind of fighting against the character's innate nature. You want speed to be an asset, not a detriment in this game, which well, it is, I, a detriment. I, 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 John Wolf in the chat says <laughs> this is a great bad game. It is. It's a great uh, bad game. I that. think it's a. I think it's a misunderstood game. Sure. And I thank John Wolf for for putting this on the radar. Somebody needs to mod this game and put like knuckles in and just make him climb everything and not run fast. And this gonna be. All this right. game will be. All amazing. right. Somebody in this chat says we have Jez here and, and we've gone off the rails. Absolutely, we've gone too, too, too long on this, this ridiculous tirade. But we had to. No, do I, it. I've this just game. been patiently waiting, waiting for you guys because I, I want to wait to offer my take on this. 
Please give I, us I your think take, my take is very important. I, I need your take, sir, because are you, you, guys are, from... you are important in this conversation. Yes, sir. What do you think? Are you guys familiar with the Geneva Convention? Of course yes. I am. Yes, of course. I think they should add a new article to the Geneva Convention mm -hmm. by which 3D Sonic is just illegal globally. <laughs> Oh my God! What are you Forever. saying? Yes. Yeah. What are you saying? I, I think oh I three. I think. What are you doing to me? I think three D Sonic <laughs> is the Antichrist. Uh, oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> I, oh I think. Uh -huh. I think so Sonic Mania was the the last good Sonic, and then mm. that it just shouldn't be three D ever. Mm. Partially because of what you said, it, it's like if you add when you add three D, you can't go fast. You get stuck on you get stuck on walls. You get stuck on everything, you know. But when it's two D, you can go fast, right? But, but the problem with three D, it's like, that. yeah. If you if you want to add that sort of that going fast element in three D, it starts to feel like it's on rails. But it doesn't when it's two D. So, I think three D Sonic should be banned. Um, I think there should be an international treaty between countries that no country can make 3D Sonic without having to uh, visit The Hague for um, uh, yes, war yes. crimes. And I used against to live in The Hague, so I I'll tell you where it is. <laughs> I, I used to live there, so let's go. <laughs> I actually think this game does a lot to address the issues with 3D Sonic without making mm. it feel like it's on rails. Uh, but see, that's the problem. It, it needs to be on rails for it to be fun here, and it's design. not. So, so as Jez says, you keep falling into things that you shouldn't be falling into. You keep like bumping into like stuff that you should not be bumping into, right? Because it's a 3D world that forces you to do. I It's interesting. I, I will continue playing it, but it is still I agree with those. I won't say it's like a big trash fire, but I agree with those. It's I, agree Sonic both, I agree both with those who say that this is a missed opportunity, and I also agree with you Everborn in saying that this is a very interesting game to to go into. Uh, I will also say the Nightmare Worlds. Have you played that Nightmare level? It is insane yeah. and fascinating. You need to play that. It is like insane, but we won't. We'll, we'll move forward. Yes, it's, it's on the. It's in the gameplay thing here. Uh, you'll, you'll see it. This whole, uh, however uh, long this show is, would be about uh, this game. But we no. need to move on. So no, I, we, are, I, we are going I, to move on. But we are going to move on. And we will start. We will start this show. Usually, we start this show. You know, with the games we, we're, we're playing, right? And we're talking about uh, we're, we're talking about the the news stories, and you know, at this point, the whole the, there should be like an ABK block at this point <laughs> on this show because there's always some new new development to discuss, and we will get there. But with, since we have the one and only Jez Corden here, and since he is a man like us who is a man of culture, and you will understand that what I mean when we talk about our next topic, we will first and foremost. Have a bit of a tech drop, and you guys are gonna have to enjoy our tech drop because we're talking about 12 years and Windows Phone. Because Mr. Jez Corden loves him some Windows Phone, and and those who know us, who've been on this show well uh, long enough, know that we love our Windows Phone here. Now, now I will start with you, Jez, and then we will tell you why we love Windows Phone. You love Windows Phone. Why do you love Windows Phone? Tell us why you love Windows Phone. <laughs> Part of its nostalgia, you know, it's, um, I, I've told this story before. So anyone who knows, anyone who knows from like my history of how I came into the industry, they'll probably know this story, but, um, I actually, I actually got a windows phone out of spite, um, because okay. someone, someone I knew at the time, like I didn't even, I didn't care for smartphones really. I, I had like a, a basic Android Motorola, cheap, cheap smartphone. It was, it was awful. And like, I'd only ever bought cheap smartphones. So the smartphones I'd always had were awful. And my experience was smartphones are awful because I'd only bought cheap ones. And um, what do they call that? The Windows 95 effect? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> it's the Windows effect in general, right? You buy, you buy a cheap laptop, but you don't blame the OEM. You blame Windows. But... You, you blame Windows. Ah, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, And to the surface. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. There was, this, um, there was this dude in the sort of the group of friends I was hanging out with at the time who was like, he was obsessed with Apple. He was obsessed with Apple. He had the Apple logo stuck to his front door. He had Steve Jobs' uh, biography on his coffee table. He had a Mac in every room. He just nonstop talking about Apple, Apple, Apple. And he was like, just like a massive douche, to, to put it bluntly. And I was like, 
And he was always like, oh, you should get to be an Apple user. I'm sorry. Just like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Okay>. Well, <laughs> you said it, not me. But um, I, I was just like, he was just like, oh, you should get an iPhone. You should get an iPhone. The Motorola, your Motorola sucks and all this. And I'm like, yeah, it does suck. But like, just to, just to, you know, be a dick, literally just to be a dick. I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy a Windows phone. I got a Windows PC. I'm going to buy a Windows phone just to be like antithetical, you know, um, and, uh, and contrarian, you know, and, uh, and Windows phone eight had just launched. So there was quite a lot of marketing for Windows phone floating around. And I thought, oh, that's nice and colorful and interesting, you know, and it's a little bit different. Like Remember when bit... they called it the Windows phone seven series oh, for God. some ridiculous oh. reason? Yeah, I have no idea. See, I never, I never used a Windows Phone Seven. Like, I came in quite late, so I, I got um, no, oh my god. Okay, so I remember now. I got, I got a HTC ATX, right? Oh, HTC wow, ATX. Great one. I love the HTC ATX. Yeah, it's a really good phone. I got, it, yeah, I got it really cheap, and it was really nice. Like, you know, polycarbonate unibody. It had this like yep. soft touch plastic. It was just really, really nice, and um. It was the best. Is I never had a smartphone that was that good before, and I was just like, I just fell in love with this phone, you know, and it really irritated this guy, and I loved it. I was like, wow, I'd kill two birds with one stone here. I get a good phone, and also I really irritate this guy. <laughs> it was out of spite, mm -hmm. and then, um, and then I was like, I was like, oh, you can game on this, and it's got Xbox achievements, which is awesome, and I really wanted. Um, there was a Mass Effect mobile game. I can't remember the name of it. Maybe you guys remember, but there was a Mass Effect mobile game on on Windows Phone, but it was exclusive to Nokia Lumias. Yeah, I do so, recall. Had yeah. turrets and little. You could you could you could like be in the 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 stupid little uh, Mako, which is terrible game gameplay, but you could do that. I, I remember this. Yeah, I, do. I, 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 do. I can I can barely remember it, but it was mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. it was um, I was was it called Mass Effect Infiltrator? I think. Something, something like that. Of that nature yeah let, let me let me hunt it down yeah. when you speak go ahead yeah. yeah and um i actually like i actually this is before i was a blogger or anything i googled stephen elop's email address you're right infiltrator please continue yeah infiltrator mm -hmm. yeah i googled stephen elop's email address um because he's the nokia ceo and i sent him an email and i said hey um i've got a hcc atex i really like windows phone but i can't afford a nokia lumia but I was wondering how long your exclusivity deal for Mass Effect Infiltrator is because I want to play it, you know. I just thought, I'll, I'll just screw it, I'll email him. That's kind of what I do, right? Um, when I want to know something, I just email someone and what's the, the worst thing is that... Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, the worst thing were is they don't reply, right? Were you a journalist back then? Or, or no. Or were you, you were just like, like just a fan He's of just that. naturally that way. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> I just, I just, yeah, I wasn't a journalist. I wasn't a blogger. I, I wasn't even hobby blogging at that point. I was just, I was just, you know, audacious, I guess. <laughs> so I sent him this email and you never believe it, but he said to me, he, he wow. replied and he said, can't, we can't comment on what uh, our second party deal, third party deals are, but I'd like to send you a free Nokia Lumia 920 so you can play it. Oh, that's awesome. And I, was, uh, I was just a and, random guy, right? And, and, and by the way, uh, Kind of serendipitous that it was Mass Effect Infiltrator and Stephen Elop was an infiltrator. Was the infiltrator to the Nokia for my Nokia back into the house? But yeah. a little bit. Nicely done, sir. Well, well thread. <laughs> but I mean, it's crazy. And then I was like, "There's, there's no way. There's no way." And then lo and behold, a couple of weeks later, a red Nokia Lumia 920 showed up on my house. I was just, I was wow. just mind blown, you know. And um, and that's when I sort of like, I really fell in love with it because the Nokia Lumia was a step up from the HCC ITX. Oh, the yeah. camera the camera was just absurd on that phone for its time still, better than anything else out there yeah still it's, it's yeah, still they, they, they now move toward uh, to software rather than the hardware and obviously they've been able to bridge that gap but do, for hardware wise do, it's still very do very you impressive. remember all the crap that the 1020 got for the camera bump and the now everybody, bump, yes. you can't even lay a phone on a table without <laughs> yeah. it tipping over. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so that's, yeah, it's totally true, right? But um, when, when he sent me that phone, I was just like, widgets now. yeah, I got really into it then. I was like, I was on Windows Central, Windows Phone Central back in the day. Mm. And because um, that was the only place you could get information, right? Um, 
you know, learning about how it worked, learning what the good apps were and all that kind of stuff. I got really into it. And then I sort of became like, you know, as the more that guy pushed on the Apple side, I was like pushing on the Windows side. I was like, nah, you should get a Windows phone, man. You should get a Windows phone, you know, being a dick about it. And then, um, and yeah, that's so uh, that's that's I remember playing this game. I do. It was awesome. It was a it really was cool awesome mobile game. game. They shut it down. They shut yeah. it down. It's really yeah, you sad. could do Renegade and Paragon, the whole thing. I do remember this game. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was it was a sick mobile game. It was really cool. It really um, was. The Absolutely. the powers were really cool, and mm -hmm. yeah, I was just like, I, I really want to play this this mobile game, you know, because it's got Xbox achievements, but it's it was exclusive to Lo Locky Lumia, like HCC ITX didn't have it. So, um, but yeah, that's that's how I got into Windows Phone. Absolutely, that's that's pretty awesome, man. And now, so so and. Since that time, obviously, you've been using yeah, it. I'm sure in Mass sure. Effect and Zeromeda. <laughs> okay, okay. Wow, no, that's messy. No, no, wow. no, sir. No, sir. That, that is above. That is, that is below the belt, sir. Well, you know what? Let's get to you. What is your experience with the old Windows 7, sir? I, I know you, you have some development experience. Go ahead. Okay, so I, I actually owe my career today, and funny enough, to uh, just the whole Windows phone and that ecosystem. I was not a software engineer or a game developer when that thing came out. And I had always wanted to, um, you know, make a game. And once like, you know, Android and iOS came out and I heard people were making like a million dollars off of a fart app, uh, I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to make a game, but those markets are too saturated. So I decided... I was going to learn how to make, there it is. Um, I was gonna learn how to make a game and I was gonna teach myself to code, but I was gonna do it on Windows phone since I felt like I could get a little bit more shine there since it was a smaller market. Um, so I made this game called Star Tennis, which was basically Pong with lightsabers. And then we stole Star Wars sound effects. Oh. Um, <laughs> Interesting, yes. And that was just, I did that to kind of teach myself how, how to code. Uh, and then I started uh, working on my next game, which I wanted it to be like a proper 2D platformer on mobile because I felt like no one's really making like proper 16-bit era 2D platformers. And the mobile uh, hardware could handle that. And so it was always weird to me why that wasn't there. And so Ariel's world was born as a way of saying, you know, uh, like Mario world it was Ariel's world. And um, so basically I, that's why you love Sonic so much. You are also doing exactly what Sega does, which is copy Mario. Understood. Keep, keep going. Yeah. Call it what you want. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Mario biters unite. <laughs> so so I, I made this game uh, Ariel's world and um, the you see how it says Windows phone exclusive there. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> But it was a whole thing. Uh, Wonderful platforming game, says Windows Central, indeed. Right? Um, when it, it was at pick of the week, all those things. I think we did like, we were number one 2D platform of the week we came out. Um, and I, I used this game when I started interviewing at uh, kind of tech companies and ended up, and when I interviewed at, uh, and I did interview at Microsoft, and Facebook and uh, a few other tech companies. I got a few offers. I ended up going with Citigroup as a technology analyst, but that, um, you're right, Jez, it was George back then. Um, that, this game is what I talked about in the development experience that got me that job, which started my whole career in this world. Um, and from there, I said I was gonna start working on a sequel and then at that time, Windows Phone was kind of going away. And so uh, I said I was going to use Unity because that that I, I could develop it everywhere. And um, from that, I started putting together stories and things like that because I wanted the sequel to have some sort of a story. And um, that is where the whole Everborn universe came from. It was the the... The new game was going to be called Everborn Ariel's Adventure. And the story that I started putting together for it is what birthed the whole comic book universe that we have today. 
and we're like six or seven chapters into what it. What you're saying is you we're working on game. Your, everything, your, your, everything. Your career. My career Windows. and the Everborn saga, all because of Windows Phone. Interesting. And and did you know that there was this wonderfully like illustrated and visual like like representation of your game here on Windows Central? This is pretty yeah, awesome. I, I, I knew very this. well. I shared this with a lot of people. This is pretty awesome. I did not know you. this was. I, I just kind of discovered this while we were going. So. There's there's your uh, cultural uh, touchstone. You can always like harken back to it. It's pretty awesome. This That's is my uh, four quadrant controls. I, I can see, I can see, and unfortunately, it's stuck on Windows Phone, isn't it? You 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 it's have not stuck on Windows Phone. It, this, Understood. By the way, if if you know anything about development, and I, I know Pixel Bit G's in the chat. I know he knows. This entire game was made using X and A, but I did it all in a single class. With a whole bunch of uh, methods, <laughs> it's like fifty thousand lines of code and X and in a one was class. Like it, it was like a, like the abacus of its day. Right. <laughs> there's no there's no like Unity style IDE yeah. where you have the editor yep. you can drag stuff into the scene. I had to use Notepad text files and then Do assign uh, objects to uh, specific characters on the keyboard Fantastic. to design these levels. This is hey, there we go. All this is awesome, brother. A single class. And this is how I cut my teeth learning how to do software engineering, and what's got me into the world of what I do today. So uh absolutely all, all fantastic. Form. We'll never forget. Okay. And okay. it That's created awesome, the Everborn man. universe. Yeah. So I will post this this in the chat if y'all want to go check check it out for yourself. A cool touchstone for the for 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 f- figuring out where Mr. Everborn saga's roots roots were were. Uh, 20, 2018 article. Pretty interesting stuff. I did not know this was, was a thing. I, I would have read it a while ago. This is pretty awesome. But okay. Uh, we will move swiftly along with with more tech stuff. I will say how I got into it is I was a, a proud Zune uh, owner. I had the OG Zune. Yes, that's right. And when, when they, the way, they came out with the Zune one, HD. One thing, Kay, about, mm-hmm. about another thing. That mm-hmm. We know that um, the Windows Phone evolved from the Zune UI. Yes. But the entire music industry basically came from what Zune was doing with the subscription. Yes, yes absolutely. Yes, I was going to go there. Absolutely. Like, I saw this Zune UI and I said, please, this is the Zune HD. I still have it. I had the old, like, crappy one from back in the day. And then when it died, I bought the HD version. I think it's 32 gig. I said, please, all you need to do is just put a phone UI on here. Let me make phone calls with this thing. Don't change a thing. Keep it exactly the same way. <laughs> and, and, like, I love this the, the UI. Amazing. And they basically did that with windows phone so i have i was a stands from day one and i'm still angry that it's no longer it no longer exists I, like but then again you know i you 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 will learn quickly that i stand by the underdog i'm also a big fan of the palm pre which i also have right here <laughs> so there you go the, the got a lot of palm fans in uh, windows centrals exactly so you know we are kindred spirits around here sir we are you know <laughs> jez i wanted to ask you this right mm-hmm. you 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 uh are well versed in the in the the, the lore of Windows Phone. Do you think it would have been a better idea at the time if Microsoft wanted to enter into mobile for them to buy Palm mm. and use that as their mobile OS? Because I HP fe- buying Palm? Yeah, I feel like Palm's problem was they didn't have the resources to keep going. That and they sided with Sprint as their as their carrier, which was the worst yep. thing they could have done at the time. But I feel like Microsoft could have given them the back end services they needed, like a music service and all those other things. Uh, and they could have went from there. And obviously, Microsoft's problem was that they tried to charge for the OS without building their own flagship device. So you got a bunch of uh, weird things. And by the time they got Nokia on board, it was too late. And we can relitigate that all we want. But what if instead of going down the Windows phone route, they they bought Palm and used that as their OS. What do you think would have happened? I I'll be honest. Palm is before my time. I was not a blogger, and my my knowledge of Palm is very limited. All I know is that some Daniel Rubino talks about it a lot sometimes when um when other two other people bring it up. So um, <clears throat> I'll be completely honest. I'm not hundred percent sure um about Palm, but it's pretty apparent that. There's something. There was something in the Windows Phone model that sort of didn't work, and I think like Android and iOS just kind of let let fro- they're leapfrog uh, Windows uh, Windows mobile devices 
um, with a you know a better UI and a better a better app model really, and they sort of like they sort of exploded into that paradigm where Microsoft was always sort of limping behind playing catch up. That's the kind of impression that I got. Now, should they have purchased Palm or something else to catch up? Uh, it, it almost it almost makes it almost makes you wonder like would that have been enough? It's hard to say. It's really hard to say. I think like I think I think um a lot some of it's Steve Ballmer's maybe arrogance. You know, that if you say, if you go back and look at some of those interviews and stuff from back in the day, he said things like iPhone and I would catch on stuff like that. It's because he wasn't looking at it with a clear a clear mind or an honest an honest sort of you know, uh, a self-aware take on it. I think. I think he was caught up in the fact that you know, Windows Phone, had, uh, Windows Mobile, I guess at the time had market share, and that it was like, yeah, this is the phone businesses want, and it, it's like, is it though, or is it just because there's nothing better, nothing better's come along, and you know, lo and behold, something better, better did come along. You know, even BlackBerry, you know, kind of. Um, yes. Yes. The king well, of its it, time. Long live the king. <laughs> Traditionally in business, it is very hard for market leaders in with whatever uh, silo they're in to go and do something different because it requires you to kind of sacrifice the, the the lamb, so to speak, right? So you have to kill the cow that that, that is uh, printing money or whatever it is. And I think that with Balmer, they were so focused on Windows because they were so dominant there. They just didn't see the the mobile uh thing coming around them and then they kind of got caught flat-footed and and the windows phone 7 didn't even come out through until three years after the iphone and at that point android was in the market for two years apple was doing what they were doing and the market had kind of settled on these are the two that are going to be there and and if they weren't so focused on their bread and butter they may not they may it's potential that they could have had a viable product in the market before Google was able to take over. And I do think there, because this is a gaming uh, podcast, I do think we see some parallels with that. With uh, oh, oh, I was Sony. about to say you, you're, um, you're really like giving me some deja vu feelings right now, real quick. <laughs> yeah, because I think I think people look at these markets and think they're static, and because hey, this is the model that we we've made money in. This is the model we're successful in. We own the world right now, so therefore we will own it together, and we need to do more of that. And then the market changes around you, and now you start crying to regulators in Brussels. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Before you know it, you're, you're, you're on a plane going to cry. <laughs> but but I, I think uh -huh. that happened to Microsoft with mobile, and that's how they yeah. missed it. And I think Sony, if they're not careful trying to protect the old business model, it will change around them before it's whether changed. Microsoft is able to buy Activision or not. Yep. yep. And, and, and it doesn't seem like they're fully addressing the shifts in the market that are happening around them. Absolutely. I, I think I agree with you on that. I, I really do. I, For I think once. I agree. For once. You know, it happens. Oh, it by happens. the way, Jez, I meant to tell you, I, I, uh -huh. I DM'd Rand and told him to come uh -oh. on and surprise you. And he said, <laughs> no, let Jez come on and feel special. Oh, wow. <laughs> That is hilarious. That's great. <laughs> Shout out to Mr. Randall Thor 19, another another friend of the show. We, we we love having him on this show. This is pretty great. You know what? Let it, let's keep the train of the tech talk moving. And I, I know you know some some folks are like ah Windows Phone ah. Let, let's get into a, a realm that maybe some more folks might be interested in. Let's talk a little bit about the old Logitech G Cloud, because uh, yes. Now, do you have one, uh, Mr. Corden? I do not. I do not. Um, okay. did, you, did you ever get one for review? Did you did you want to test one? Like, how do you feel yeah, about did. these cloud devices? I did put a request in for a review in it, but um, I don't think Logitech likes me very much, <laughs> which is fine. You know, it's fine. Okay. It is what, it is did, right. it, was that, was, Jez, was that after your tweet about uh, if you're interested about uh, mm. the Logitech G? Uh, <laughs> there's something coming uh, better down the line. Do you think they looked harshly on that? No, they 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 stopped replying after we did our we did our news posts and that you know when it come up to the announcement and it, it really pisses me off when companies do this, but when it, and like game company game publishers do it too they they're like oh yeah we're um 
uh, we want to work with you, uh, promote our game, you know, promote our game, come to this preview event, blah, 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 blah. And we spend all this money, like, traveling, going to preview events, expensing, or whatever. And then when it comes to review, it's like, oh, no replies, no replies, no replies. So they used us, they used us for the hype cycle. And it's a pet, it's a pet peeve of mine. Yeah, but you don't, you, don't get, mine, right? you don't get what you, you need back, which is, yeah. you know, access to the device to test it and possibly review. Yeah. That's terrible, yeah. And like, do you, but... Do, do you think that's because they didn't think it was going to review favorably? So they tried to limit the exposure of the reviews? I, I have I have no idea. Um I have I have honestly no idea. Um we, you know, Windows Central is not the biggest outlet in the world and but we're by no means entitled to get review units. I'm not being entitled and I, I don't care about game free stuff. I mean, you see behind me, there's review units for days here, you know, all this junk. I got nowhere to put it, right? Um so, so I, I could so I've frankly for me it just it just you know it's nice getting free stuff, but it also represents a hell of a lot of work you know a lot of the time. In any case, I um, it just really bugs me when companies do this and they're kind of like yeah you know support support our launch and then when it comes to the review they're just nowhere to be seen. So um, and then I tweeted that after the fact, but not because not because um. We didn't get a review unit. I was feeling cynical, but because the Razer device is it the fact? It's a it's a it's better. point fact that it's better. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, well, it's you, you, you know to your point, Jez. Um, when we first talked about this, I wasn't high on it, but I do think that there is a market for a high end uh, gaming tablet. There right? is, and that's that's what the Razer device is. This Logitech G Cloud is pointless. You know, because it is it it isn't good enough to do the other things that a mobile device can do. Whereas the Razer, you can literally detach detach it from the controller and use it as a tablet. Like I could like use it as a Kindle on a train if I don't have a good enough signal. And you can do that with this, but the standard then it's like tablet. Yeah, and yeah. but you could do that with with this too. You know, you could use Kindle on it or YouTube, or whatever. But it's still it's like a game device. Still, you can't mm -hmm. take it out of the of the gamepad. So then it's sort of it, you'd be on the train. It's kind of like you're holding a whole Nintendo Switch on its side. <laughs> you know, to to read a book and stuff. Whereas yeah. the the Razer device just seems more versatile. But not only that, it's way more powerful. You know, you can play native games on that. You can play Genshin Impact at 60 frames or, you know, up to 144 hertz display. Mm -hmm. And it's not that much more expensive. You know, it's 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 like yeah. comparable in price to the Logitech I G. I did pre-order the, the, the Razer. I did pre-order that yeah. one. I, I, I did not pre-order this guy, but I definitely did pre-order that one because, yeah. like, as you're saying, you know, these cloud devices, they, they live and die by the internet connection. And when you don't have it, then it's about what type of device you have. And in, yeah. in this G Cloud, if you don't have an internet connection, you have a pretty old, decrepit device, frankly. Yeah. Whereas, you know, the Razer G Cloud body slam these like guys. Cloud. Yeah. Razer absolutely body slam these guys. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's sad. You know, it's truly sad. Like, how. You know that G Cloud launches with it with with like these sort of basic features, sixty hertz display, and sort of mm -hmm. a mid processor and stuff. And then Razer just waltzes in with like a, a super duper gaming platform processor, one hundred forty four hertz display, and and all this other stuff. It's just kind of like the Logitech device shouldn't even exist. And, and you know, <laughs> that's Logitech for you. You know, they kind they kind of like this sometimes. Yeah, but um we, we kind of came a little late to the party with it. Yeah, and that they're overpriced. But I also appreciate the the position they're in because they're not making the whole po the whole console market revolves around software sales. The whole the whole market. So they sell they sell PlayStation at cost, they sell Xbox at cost. They make very little mar there's li very little margin on the hardware because the idea is that they take a cut of the microtransactions, they take a cut of the software, they take, you know, the they sell accessories and all that kind of stuff. But with this Logitech G Cloud, there's there's no upsell. There's no upsell. There's no accessories. There's no there's no software sales. Google takes all that. There's no attack. There's no licensing. There's nothing. So you have to sell the hardware if you want to make a profit. You have to sell the hardware. The the profit comes from the hardware, which is why it's so expensive. But the problem is, it flies in the face of like companies that can do the software attachment, like your Steam Deck, like your Nintendo Switch. Where that's like, yeah, we can sell these devices at cost because we're making loads of money on the software. 
can't do that with the Logitech G Cloud, and you can't really do it with the Razer either, which is why I'm surprised. G Cloud versus the yeah. G Cloud versus the 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 Razer hardware comparison. Yeah. Obviously, the, there you go. So yes, and it's uh, I am like I'm shocked that Razer was able to get the the Razer Edge as cheap as it is comparatively. Look at mm -hmm. that double double the RAM for God's sake, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it's double the RAM, mm -hmm. better screen better yep. processor better everything and it's not that much more expensive for what you get for it like the mm -hmm. razor device is a true handheld for android and you know the android doesn't have the best games in the world but there are some like really good native android games and you know the, there are companies yep. that are starting to take mobile gaming a little bit more fortnite. seriously in a triple a context native android game fortnite yeah, <laughs> you exactly. can play fortnite on this thing and you probably can't yeah. do that pretty well on the g cloud you know something exactly like that. So, yeah absolutely and um so yeah, the 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 Razer Edge just completely bodies the G Cloud. The G Cloud should just unlaunch itself, probably. <laughs> I'm waiting for that killer sale when it's, it's like, like ninety nine dollars, and that'll be a stocking yeah. stuffer for people because that's when it's unique. That's when it's good. I think. Okay. I think uh, that G Cloud gets the sub a hundred bucks, and that uh, thing becomes uh, good. Uh, uh, this is what I do right now. Mm. I um, I've just I've got the I got I just got I got a Razer phone mm -hmm. and a game sir. And I just keep the Razer phone docked all the time in this in this game sir controller, and that's pretty much how I do it right now. But I've also got a Surface Duo, um, and yeah, I've seen your, your, your I've seen your tweets with the with the cool yes. controller and the bend. Yeah, the Surface yes. Gang. There you go. Yeah. Surface Gang. There you go. Surface Gang. I need I need yeah. your review. What do you think? Because you you have also tried the Samsung uh, Fold. So what do you think about um, what's your daily driver between the two? Well, yeah, it's, and, and that's and what actually about dual screen versus yeah. uh, just folding screen. Oh, this is actually what I'm I'm writing next week is um, um, because what happened to me was I uh, I bought the duo and the fold last summer. I bought both of them when they came out. They, they both came out around the same time, and I was like, I'm going to decide which is going to become my main phone. So I was using the duo and using the the, the Galaxy Fold. And the duo was just, they just, the polish wasn't there. The poly, the soft, the operating system, the polish just was just not there. It was buggy. When I was like trying to do video calls, I put WhatsApp on one screen and then do something else on the other. And it was lagging. And like, there was just loads of like issues with it. So I ended up going with the Samsung Galaxy Fold because the operating system was just so much more polished and so much more mature. And, you know, Samsung had, you know, theming and skinning and, it was another one of them. Microsoft was just behind, just well behind. However, in the last couple of weeks, uh, well, about a month ago now, my Galaxy Fold randomly broke. I was I was in bed using Twitter, and the screen just broke. <laughs> I didn't drop it. I didn't do he anything a, to it. He read it a just takes so bad that it just broke his screen. It was yeah. just like this horrible Twitter thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was on Twitter and some of the some of the pixels in the display just died i was i didn't do anything you know, aggressive to it the the screen just some of the pixels died and i was like oh my god that's crazy so um i uh, sent it back to samsung and they repaired it for free you know to, to their credit it was just about in warranty i think very very luckily just still in warranty by like a month or something and um so i got it repaired for free but in the interim microsoft was like um do you want to try out Surface Duo? <laughs> because uh, we've done loads of updates on it and stuff. So you think they uh, reached out to you because they knew your Samsung broke? Well, actually, I I reached out to them and said, okay. did they have any loaner units? Because I, I was thinking like, I'll, you know, I need a phone, and I thought, well, I could get a loaner unit and then write some content. But they were like, yeah, we'd we'd like to send you one. Um, so I've been using the Surface Duo again for a couple of weeks um, with all the polish and updates they've been doing. And I've been really, really impressed with it. And now I've, I got my, my Galaxy Fold back from, from Samsung. I've boxed it up and I'm going to sell it. And I'm going to stick with the Surface Duo as my daily driver. And um, I'll tell you why. It's, there, are, there are things that I think I was using the, the, the Duo wrong. You know, you don't always need to use the second screen. And I think that's where, like, some of my... It's it's kind of confusing, you know. You've you got two screens, so you feel like you have to use them, right? 
So I was constantly trying to use these two screens and just kind of getting frustrated because it's kind of like, well, do I span this? Do I not? What do I put on the second screen? You know, because you can only do two things at once, really. But it's it's more it's better to think of it as like a, a single screen phone with an ex, uh, monitor extension. You know, you use you use a second monitor when you need to. For example, um, I like sketching. You know, I like I'm trying to learn digital art and get better. One of the really great uses I found is like I uh, open like the, the the art course I'm doing on one screen, and then have Autodesk Sketchbook on the second screen because the inking experience on the Duo is far superior to the the Samsung Galaxy Fold. So that's one that's one reason I like it more. Another reason I like it more, the camera's better. You know, after they've done loads of updates, I find the camera at least in. Um, uh, good light. I find like wow. it's a lot more natural. Shout out to the man Paris, who's who's in the chat here to to hear what, what Jez has to say as a Blizzard fan. Shout out to you, <laughs> <good> <laughs> uh, We've already talked about Overwatch, mm -hmm. but um, <laughs> yeah, Paris is awesome. But uh, me what and Paris, up, Paris, we we have a we have a bond over uh, believing that Netflix should release episodes once per week instead of <laughs> instead of all. So, so you you're against Jez, you're, you're against Randolph who thinks they should just complete keep, yeah. keep going the, the, the route they are going interesting i ain't got okay. time for binging stuff man i'd much rather it was like <laughs> weekly because then it's like i don't get any spoilers i can watch one episode mm. a week can't watch a whole show every week what you're saying and then everyone can't get nice things because people are gonna spoil it for you yeah that's exactly what i'm saying <laughs> I, I, I just i just would like to point out right we came into the streaming world where we're like oh my god it frees us from having to have all pay for all of the these ties channels that, that we don't yep. watch yep. and content uh is all brought in that way and and we have to deal with commercials on 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 cable and it's 50 dollars a month and and you have to wait week to week to watch things and now netflix is introducing commercials Mm. moving to a week-to-week -week model and in order for you to get all the content you want you have to sign up to 35 services that are more than what you were paying for cable and you know what's going to come out jez and k that is going to take the world by storm a package yeah, of all so, the streaming services where you bundle it together right and you pay a monthly subscription yeah and we're right back idea. where we started with cable Fun of times. course, that's where we're going. Of course, that's where we're headed. Absolutely, hundred percent. You know, but but let let's 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 reel it back in. Let's reel it back in because we have we we're, our our time is limited with Mr. Jez Corden. But so 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 ultimately, to to button up the story of the fold versus the versus the duo, you're gonna stick with the duo, duo two or yeah. one, by the way. Uh, duo two. Um, duo two. I, okay. Okay. The, it beats it beats the Samsung for multitasking as well. Honestly. Oh yeah, of course, because of the and, dual screens, like actual yeah, dual and, screens, yeah. And um, it's going to be annoying if they do a Duo three and they do go to flexible glass because then it ruins the whole like idea of it. The yeah. the number one thing that annoys me about the Samsung Fold when it comes to multitasking and side by side apps is that like I'll open I'll open the the keyboard on to to use an app like if I got Telegram for example on one side and I got YouTube on the other. Or, or like I've got YouTube on top and then Telegram at the bottom, I'll open the keyboard and it'll push everything up. It'll push YouTube mm -hmm. up as well, which kind of defeats yep. the point, right? Yep, yep, yep. But because on the Duo, the screens are isolated. So what I'm doing on one screen doesn't no interfere difference. with the yep. other screen. Yep, it's yep. isolated. So like I can truly multitask with the Duo, which you can't really do on the Samsung unless you're using two apps passively. Um, so while it's kind of cool that the Samsung Fold is like a full-blown tablet, um screen when you fold it out and you can have that huge screen for like x cloud and stuff it kind of doesn't matter yeah, in day because day use it kind of ruins the experience a little bit right yeah because mm. the duo cut even though it's got a smaller screen you can put the touch controls on the lower screen which means you end up with more screen real estate on the duo anyway because the touch controls aren't all over the screen like if they if they came up with a I, I pitched this to Microsoft before I said like on the Galaxy Fold you should make it so the game appears at the top of the screen and the controls at the bottom, and um, they haven't done it you know for whatever reason maybe there's a tech technical issue with that, but I you know it's um but that's another issue I've got with it you know you can drag the the touch controls down to the bottom of the screen so that you get you get do get more real estate but it just feels nicer on the Duo it really does my only gripe to the Duo is um. I play guitar, right? 
so the tip the tips of my fingers are really hard because of playing guitar right calluses yeah Mm -hmm. and the duo has a hard time registering my touches because resistive versus capacitive screen like it's 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 yeah hard to to get through interesting my my fingers are really pointy because Mm -hmm. not and when i touch the screen it doesn't cut it doesn't contact enough with the screen so sometimes i have to tap multiple times or i have to tap with that part of my screen finger more squishy yeah. right whereas yeah, yeah, the galaxy yeah. fold the screen's super sensitive so it can you know no matter what i do i can be using my little finger or whatever it'll detect yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's the only frustration i got with the duo is that the it's not it doesn't detect not my finger enough. it's not sensitive enough yeah but okay. that's the only that's the only gripe i got with it man it's it's like mm. but at the same time i also got it for free so would i would i recommend it for 1800 bucks probably not you know it's it's that's usually the beginning and end of that one yeah absolutely yeah before before, i do think we got to move on but before we do one thing that i will say about the duo Mm too it's weird that they addressed all the issues people had with the original duo but in addressing that you have this camera bump that now you now makes it prohibitive all the way back (laughs) Yeah. And as an owner of the original duo, I was able to actually use it as a phone, like a, 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 nor- a candy bar phone, fold it all the way back, put it in my pocket like that. And I just feel like in adding that camera, they've introduced a secondary set of issues um, that... that um, it was almost like a spiteful addition. You want a better right. camera? Here you go. Smack yeah, let's back. just <laughs> slap it on there. I, I wish they almost had a groove in the front Mm-hmm. Uh, so that it could close and be flush. So it could click so into that, it. That, yeah, that's exactly. an interesting idea. That's an interesting I think that idea. hopefully that they'll they can figure that out in the in the third iteration of the duo. I also feel like I I'm a person. I don't use a case on on my iPhone, right? Uh, and I've dropped this thing a few times, and it you know it's still it's still going. I feel like the duo because they were trying to make it so thin because it's a dual screen. Because when it's closed, it's basically thinner than this with the no. camera, right? I think um, they shouldn't worry about making it so thin. Mm-hmm. And you can see that the fold doesn't care about thinness, right? I think they should make it thicker because that w- would make it more durable. So even though it may be more durable because it's two screens with the hinge and all the glass and how thin it is, I never really feel like I can use the Duo two in the real world right and there's no case yeah, it's too fragile that you can get to to to, to protect it yeah. and i don't know how they solve that problem i use i just use the pen cover with the bumpers on mine okay. um but that that is an issue that I, I i it is kind of hard to handle like i have the pen attached to it as well and it doesn't sit it doesn't sit on the desk properly it's sort of you know and it's very slippery it's just, it's a it's it's very slippery phone you know <laughs> i pu- i put it on a oh. shelf and i'm like i'm i'm like thinking shit that's going to fall off you know uh-huh. and crack crack the screen or whatever um but yeah i i also wish it was it wasn't so wide like it's hard yes. to hold with one hand you it's know. not no, y'all are just getting into the, odd the nuanced aspect territory. ratio <laughs> is a little bit offensive uh, uh-huh. because if you're so used to like every other phone Candy bar or phones, the galaxy yeah. fold when it's closed we've mm-hmm. kind of gotten used to this long rectangle thing it's especially since they've gotten rid of bezels and all of the apps are designed to take advantage of longer uh you know 16 by by 10 or whatever it is uh or 18 by 9 i don't i don't know how you measure that but the point is um it feels like something different and what i want from the duo is to have the extra screen when i need it and not feel like everything is like uh widened out because a lot of the ui on app is placed the placement of the icons and everything is based on a a, a longer screen and so the what the this weird aspect ratio that no one else is using kind of hurts it all right. Well, y'all, y'all can wake me up when the Neo comes out, but that's a whole different conversation. We're sticking in tech, tech drop zone, but we're heading more in gaming t- territory. Let us talk about the old Series S because I know people want to talk about that. I heard a bit of what Jez had to say about it, but let, let's 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 start this this conversation because myself and Mr. Everborn Saga have been having this conversation for a bit now, and he started on the opposite side. I think he's more on my side of it these days that the Series S was not a mistake and it actually is pretty useful and. And unique but 
we are hearing more and more now, you know, you can, you know, context matters and we'll get into the context, but we are hearing more and more quote unquote. And I, I do that not, for, not, not for, facetiously, but you know, this specifically, this instance was a design, uh, uh, a, a graphics designer, right. Who basically uh, came out and, and, and said what they said, but more and more you hear folks talking about, well, what's holding us back is the series S right. And, and obviously people have already had, had their say about it. This is a thing that blew up on the internet this week it's been blowing up on the internet for a while now the the idea that the series s keeps holding gaming back mr corden what is your opinion sir uh, uh i know you speak with individuals that we may not get privy to speaking with is this a thing that people know is this a thing that microsoft is like slowly because i did hear them that they're, they're like uh, in the background unlocking more and more megahertz to be used by developers and whatnot so you would imagine that even they that they have a thought of oh maybe we should Give, let the memory constraints, let's ease it a bit for them. What, what's your thought? Is this overblown or is this actually a thing that, that should be reckoned with? I, I'm i not a dev, so I haven't of worked course. on the Series S and mm -hmm. I, it's, it's, hard for, it's hard to say for sure what the truth is, but the people I've spoke to at Microsoft, they, they, just, they just point to the reality of it, like 120 hertz in Call of Duty on the Series S. You know, 60 frames in 60 frames for games like chivalry which have like you know dozens and dozens of live characters on screen at once you know it's it's sort of like there are countless examples of the series s providing 120 hertz performance you know so it's kind of like is it really such a big deal you know is it really really such a big deal are they more are they complaining about the performance of the series s or just the fact that they have to make two different skews why did they complain about the Series S but not the not the PS4? Because they're also making PS4 SKUs. They're also making SKUs for like a GTX 1060, you know, which is still still a popular graphics card on Steam. So yeah, yeah, the most for me, I think still. yeah, I think I think there's like there's there's a bit of ideo bit of ideology there. I think maybe possibly, but at the same time, I honestly don't know. Like all the devs I've spoken to, um, are quite happy with the Series S. You know, I I don't want to you know without i mean without their permission i might i might try cool. and get yeah, some yeah. of them on the record and write an article about it but yeah, um yeah. you know, i've spoken to some devs of some pretty prominent indie games you know not many triple a's admittedly but um you know you'd assume a triple a dev would have the resources to to make those optimizations anyway like the the devs i've spoken to have, have been either like you know double a or sort of some of the big bigger indies out there right and they all seem to be pretty happy with the series there so for my money, it, when you look at it on paper, 120 hertz in Call of Duty, I think it, yeah. I do think it kind of is overblown. That's my instinct, right? But I honestly don't know. I mean, it's something I need to research if I ever have the time, have a breather, you know. But mm -hmm. will that ever and, happen? And, and Mr. Mr. Everborn Saga, we'll, we'll go to you next. But let let's let's add more more wrinkles to the story. This this comes because of, of course, conversations about oh, you know. Uh, now we hear that that uh, that uh, Gotham Knights, uh, 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 Gotham, yeah, it's Gotham Knights will be is thirty frames per second, right? Um, uh, and frankly, it, it doesn't play really well even at thirty frames per second on all consoles so far. Uh, we we know that uh, for as good as it is, uh, um, Plague Tale Requiem also thirty frames per second, forty frames if you if you uh, uh, have a TV that can support it. And for those who who don't know. Uh, as you can see, uh, we, we are we've been big on the Steam Deck around here, and and when you're able to limit your screen resolution to 40, because of the mathematical equation, it feels more like 60 than even 30 does. So, they are trying to bridge that gap a bit, but clearly, you know, what's what is the what is your 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 take here, everybody? Is it this, is it a situation of that? Because I've seen three things here: either they're they're not used to the tech yet, or there there's some issues that they're not talking about. Or they see the overhead, and instead of giving us sixty frames, now they have loftier goals. Where do you fall on all this? Um, the thing is, we don't know. So, what can be true for one uh, developer uh, may not be true for another developer, right? And I don't know if they used Unreal for this game, or they have their own custom engine, 
Well, are we going? Um, are we are we heading directly in in the in the uh, Gotham Gotham Knights review territory? Or are you still stick, sticking? No, 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 no. I'm. But this has come up because of sure. talking about because Gotham of Gotham Knights, Knights and course, saying course, that course, the yeah. Series S is what limited all the other Absolutely. consoles, which yep. makes zero sense, right? Mm -hmm. um, but again, we don't know what engine they're using. We don't know the skill set of the development team. So yep. the Series S is an obstacle, but it is not a stone wall, yep. right? So it's it is hurdle. something that Not requires something can't be can't be overrun over uh, right. It, overdone, yeah. it, it 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 requires something uh something extra right. It, it requires extra work and it is extra work on dev. So they're going to complain. But what developer and I can tell you, as a developer, we that's what we complain. You're making more work for us. Does it mean it's holding back the entire generation? Absolutely not. Because how many times have we seen things like Dying Light come out and then later on, as they have more time, then you optimize? Because optimization is like one of the last things in the pipeline, right? So um, I think the, and again, uh, and, uh, Victor Alistine is... <laughs> dropped, it, dropped it in the chat. Thank you, Victor. Right. Uh, so, it, it is on UE4. So, and, and this is the thing. This is a new... Um, this is new hardware for a lot of development teams, right? This is the first thing that WB Montreal has done for RDNA 2 based systems. So it is what it is. It is the, it may be the case for this game that they couldn't find a way around it. But again, that's a, a tough pill to swallow when you also consider that it's all that it's on uh, PC as well. But you, if you know you what, look... you know what, real quick before you continue. So, like, let's 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 move into the game, the game talk proper. So, so let's let's head towards the review talk about this because I know people have been talking about it, right? People have been talking about it. Uh, I know you haven't played it yet, Mister Everborn Saga. Are you going to play? One hundred percent. I don't even care With all about the reviews the and all of that. I, I don't care okay. about. I'm not. I, I don't cry about thirty frames a second. Okay, it's filmic so... as some people would call it. <laughs> Um, but <laughs> well done, sir. well done. I, uh -huh. I, I'm not worried about the, the, the uh -huh. thing. I do think, um, it being $70 on console and 60 on PC yeah. is kind of disrespectful. Uh -huh. um, oh, and it's not even and, 60 on PC. I'll tell you it's 40 because I found it for 40 and I and, still haven't bought it for 40. I'm going to find it less before I buy it. And it just says, Hey, you console players, you're chumps. So what I'm, because of that. <laughs> I am going to wait until it's on sale, right? Uh, or it comes to Game Pass, whichever comes first, right? But I'm not buying it day one, not because of the reviews, not because of the 30 FPS. I, I think the game looks very interesting. A lot of people didn't like the Avengers game. I like the main campaign. And this kind of reminds me of that in, 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 in a few ways. Um, so I, I think the game looks interesting and I was high on it. I'm not high on the price and there's so many other games that are included in Game Pass right now. I'm not going to, I don't need to rush to spend $70 when I know that by the time I actually get to the game, it'll probably be, it'll probably have a 60 FPS patch <laughs> as well as be on sale for whatever you can get it at on PC. So I'm not rushing out for it, but I do just about the, the, the Series S in general. Um, I don't think we need to hop on the devs, right? Because they're trying to meet these dates. So, mm -hmm. like, would you prefer that they delay a game by three months because they want to get a 60 FPS patch out? Or do they have one mode that works on day one? I haven't heard people complaining about a lot of bugs with this game. Yeah. So how about we let them do that? And, you know, when the patch comes out, if if 60 FPS offends you or 30 FPS offends you, then don't play this game right now. Don't buy it. Don't give them your money. Or play don't it on PC them. because on PC it does not have that limitation. Sure. But yeah. just if you look at the specs that they want for PC for it to run. Yeah. Yeah. Even on PC, it, it, it seems like, like they, they have not optimized it well. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. So absolutely. if they haven't optimized it for PC, chances are they haven't optimized it for the Series S. But again, that those are things that will change. Um, but we cannot say without having used their uh, development environment. And if you haven't developed a game before, I'm not saying you can't say anything. You can absolutely complain if you're spending your money. 
But I'm just saying we don't know what the constraints are. And it's I don't for us to turn around and say, well, I saw in a marketing slide that FSS SFS does this or this other feature does that. So therefore, dev, you should just be able to flip a switch and turn that on. It doesn't really work like that. So it is what it is. Um, I say uh, the way you teach them a lesson is do what I'm doing. Wait for it to be on sale or wait for the patch to come out because I promise you that patch is going to come out. What if that patch never comes out? How will you feel then there, Mr. Everborn? I'll play it anyway. Okay. I played Ratchet and Clank at 30 FPS because I wanted all the ray tracing and all that. There you go. There you go. How about you, Jez? How you feel? I'm kind of like, uh, well, I'm not interested in Gotham Knights at all. I thought it just looked lame from the, from no. the outset, to be honest. <laughs> but, but Jez uh, you is make, not a superhero person. Hey, you make a Which DC fine, game without yeah. Batman? Like, what's the point? No. Who, who, cares about, <laughs> yeah. who cares about Robin? Yeah. And by and large, <laughs> no, everyone so. that reviewed this thing says Batman actually really is dead. I'm like, I was thinking there'd be a twist that he comes back to life, but he's not. He's actually Wait for dead. the DLC. Wait for the DLC. Batman <laughs> didn't want to show up in 30 FPS. <laughs> <laughs> he, he needs his 60 frames. I understand. I understand. But it, oh. what about the general thought, uh, Jez? Like, for instance, Plague Tale. Also 30 frames per second. Yeah. That idea that, hey, we were at 30 frames per second. We were at filmic frames per second, right? And now here we are. We have new new, uh, um, uh, new uh, consoles, new generation. The idea that the potential 60 would be the floor, but now it seems that maybe that might not be the floor. What, what, do, you, what do you think about that? Well, it's I'm kind of in two minds about it, right? Mm. Because... There's benefit. There's trade-offs and benefits in different ways, right? Because in, in Gotham Knights, for example, they wanted to have untethered co-op, which means you need to have an extra CPU going towards rendering or populating the world at two different points of the map, right? That's why State of Decay and Halo Infinite are going to have tethering, or State of Decay Two has tethering, because then it's only got a it's only got to load so however many zombies in one area right it doesn't mean like you know there's a hundred zombies here and then a hundred zombies are halfway across the map there's just a hundred zombies within the tether zone or whatever right so i kind of like i kind of appreciate that the position they were in where it's kind of like well we want we want people to have the freedom to do this because you know it it's kind of dumb if you've got a game where you can climb buildings and you know do the the grappling hook stuff if there is tethering you know you're going to be swinging around and gliding and stuff and then suddenly you you just snap back to the to the other character the other kind character, of defeats yeah. the point of the 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 you know the the whole part batman kind of parkour experience right but i also kind of like it's irritating but I get it, you know, and I'm kind of willing to accept it if the if the game's right. For example, I think Plague Tale, 30 frames, 40 frames. If you got you got 120 hertz of free sync, I think 40 frames, 30 frames, for a single player cinematic game, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. You know, I I watch a I watch a movie at 30 frames a second or 29.8 or whatever it is mm -hmm, or 24. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember what the frame rate yeah. of movies are. 24 like sometimes, yeah, it depends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't. I sort of, th I sort of think of it in that way. Mm. It sort of adds a nostalgic, almost a nostalgic cinematic quality when it's a single player game. Would I want to play Overwatch at thirty frames? Hell no. Yeah. You know, um, I've been playing Overwatch at one hundred twenty hertz the last god knows how long, and I refuse to go back. You know, even sixty. Um, <laughs> it yeah. makes sixty feel like thirty. Yes, yeah. absolutely. But if thirty frames means we can see true next gen visuals, like with all the ray tracing and the crazy foliage, and you know, see something that minute to minute just looks absolutely amazing and mind blowing, then it kind of like I'm okay with it. You know, I'm okay with mm. it. So, so, so you are on the side of if it means that they could they have overhead to shoot the bigger shots and go even further in the in the realistic and complex gen uh, uh, part then stick to 30 frames that's fine by you as long as you really take it there as far as graphically and all of that. yeah i mean in in the ideal world there'd be an option right mm -hmm. i mean we have that option on pc generally where it's like well i'll turn down the grass i'll turn off the the anastrophic filtering and you know 
and on ocular occlusion and all all this kind of stuff i'll turn it down so i can get the frames right you do yeah. that in world of warcraft like in world of warcraft in the settings there's like these these are your graphic settings for when you're in a raid where mm -hmm. everything's going crazy and making me lag out and it's like yeah i'll turn down the graphics when i'm in a raid so i don't actually accidentally lag out into a fire pit or something um and then when I'm out in the world, maybe I'll turn the graphics up so it looks a little bit prettier and sacrifice some frames for it. PC gamers, PC games, PC gamers, PC games offer that, offer those options and those experiences. Are the APIs there for it to happen on console? Is it just too much work for them to do it? Um, I don't know. I don't know why they don't do it more often, but that's the ideal scenario is that we'd have the options to turn things up turn things down tweak all the different sliders and dials and knobs and stuff like that that's the ideal scenario and there has been a couple of games that have offered it i think bright memory infinite offers yep. offers some granular controls over the the um yeah over but the bright, visuals. bright memory is really a pc game really like this even even on console it's very much a pc i accidentally uh, shout out to that real quick i accidentally i was playing it on pc once right uh, on steam and then i went over to the console on xbox and it knew my account and it raised graphic settings to my pc on the xbox and made it run at like two frames per second because <laughs> that's knows, hilarious it's just it was showing too much and basically like dog slowed the, the, you know the, yeah so <laughs> that's always been like i know you single developer sir you're just porting your pc game to console and just leaving it the same way but it, but it, you do make Damn a point straight. right in, in, in the world where we we have the steam deck which is offering more console like experiences Maybe that also spurs the gen, uh, the developers to then offer more options to console players. You know, turn the dials up, turn the dials down a bit more, give you more of those options. You're ab absolutely right. I'm wondering when that day happens. Like, is it that the, the consumer base just doesn't want to deal with that? Because I know folks who just don't want to deal with that. They they want to hit the button and, and start their game. Like, is that is that where why uh, they've always been uh, developers have been apprehensive at, at offering that? You think? I don't know. I honestly don't know what the mentality is. Part of me makes me wonder if it's like it's because they expect console gamers just want everything easy and they don't want to confuse people and stuff like that, which is why they don't offer them those options. But it kind of flies in the face of the way things have been going, you know. Like I, you go into Overwatch's settings, for example, there's just mountains and mountains and mountains yeah. of settings and of settings. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And, and Battlefield, you know, Battlefield, like the, it's absurd how much you can tweak in Battlefield. You know, as terrible as Battlefield 2042 was, um, they offer you a lot of control over over the 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 visual and the UI and and, and the experience in general. You know, so. Um, I don't know why they don't do it. Is it budgets? Is it just, you know, easier? Are the APIs not there for Xbox? Does Microsoft have guidelines about this kind of thing? I honestly don't know. But again, it's something, you know, I wish I could talk more frankly to devs about it, but oftentimes they're just secretive about some of this stuff uh, for whatever reason. Yeah. That, that, yeah, we would love more the, and more of that. R real the, quick, Everborn, I'll let you speak. Real quick, folks in the chat, I put a I put a, a, a quick poll together. What are your thoughts? Do you want more gaming options in games? Your options are heck yes, about time, or no, keep it console like. Mr. Everborn, I, I, I voted no, keep it console like. And I, mm -hmm. Ain't nobody got time for that. Um, <laughs> no, I think that okay. um, as I understand it, though, a lot of these games are profiled very specifically for the the console hardware that they're going to yep. run on. And that's yep. why, um, you know, maybe a comparable um, PC version of the same game will not run as well. This is why mm -hmm. it seems like a lot of the times these consoles are punching above their weight because a lot of the optimization is specifically to the targeting the, this, yeah. this hardware that you know you have. And I think... It, the profiling kind of goes out the window once you give them too many options because a lot of people aren't going to know what i don't know you you name the the yes. pc thing that you can change yeah. and then it could degrade your whole experience and people may not know you know how to change it from them some people do yeah. give you those options but uh the council market is so targeted you kind of want people to just forget about it and the people that want those options that's that's what the pc is for so I say, uh, keep the lines clear. And so he, he, he's saying, keep them segregated. And we're like, exactly. kumbaya, bring us together. He, he is no. a sign of the past, ladies and gentlemen. A sign Absolutely. of the past. 
I don't, but I don't okay, like okay, it. Okay. I don't want to think when I go to game. Uh-huh. You don't want to think when you go to game. I understand. I understand. Okay. Let us move on and get into some spicier topics before we get into the big guy and then we'll get the heck out of here. We, we're going to keep it. We, we, we're, we're keeping Mr. Mr. Corden's timing in, in, how, in check. How much longer do we have you for, Jess? Um, how, much, how much longer are we planning to go for? <laughs> Oh, it depends on how, how much we bloviate, good sir. We, we're going to try and keep it tight for you, sir. <laughs> pause. Big pause. Uh, all right. Anyway, let's go. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll move along quick from here. We'll move along quickly. Quickly, let us talk about this whole thing with Platinum Games and this voice actress. We talked about this last week, Mr. Everborn, when this thing came out, right? And we were, we were on the side of, hey, who did what and all of that, right? And we've gotten more information. We've got more details now, right? There's been, hey, you said left, but maybe you was a little bit right, you know? And, and now it's, it's not as clear cut and as concise as it was when it was, first, uh, uh, when it was first blowing up on Twitter, right? So let's ask the question now. And I'll start with you, Jez. After you've heard this, and I'm, I'm sure you saw the first part of this, right? So, the, you know, we're, we're, all, we're all followers of these tweets and all of this. So after you saw this, the second part of it, did it change your perception of the, the issues or are you still behind her as in, hey, these folks deserve to be paid, blah, blah, blah. Wh where do you fall now? Like I, uh, I, when I saw that video, I, when she released it, I quote to it and I was like, this is disgusting. You know, Nintendo sucks and Platinum sucks too. You know, mm -hmm. I just kind of, I just kind of way, threw my way. true. Jess. It's, it's still true. true. <laughs> um, I just, but I just kind of threw my way behind it because I was like, my mentality was, why would she lie? Why would she burn her bridges with the whole industry? Because if she's lying, nobody's going to want to work with her again. Because she'll she'll do th she'll do this, you know, and 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 create a negative impact around the game uh, heading into launch, right? And mm -hmm. she's probably violated NDAs to to yeah. to put this out there, you know, which you know, um, for whatever reason and stuff. But um, but then you know. Jason and VGC, they did some investigation and discovered that she'd been offered, you know, significantly more than she claimed she had been. Yeah. Um, I still think it wasn't really appropriate how much she was offered, given how big the franchise is, how, how mm -hmm. concerning it's the third game. And also mm -hmm. there's a, there's a big debate over residuals and that kind of thing. I think, I think voice actors are underappreciated in gaming considering how big the industry is compared to like Hollywood gaming's literally bigger than Hollywood. You know, why do we yeah. treat voice actors any less than, um, you know, Hollywood tier actors, you know, these, these are people that create art and memories for us. And, you know, when like the whole thing with David Hayter being replaced by Kiefer yeah, Sutherland, absolutely, that yeah. really, really upset me <laughs> oh yeah yeah <laughs> many of us absolutely. With david hater is a snake and you're mm -hmm. gonna go and replace him and then keep keep a sutherland already had like four lines of the whole in game the anyway game. <laughs> um absolutely. so uh yep. i so yeah i think i think voice actors are massively undervalued but at the same time she really undermined her arguments by not presenting the truth like admit, admitting lies by omission you know yeah i think she undermined her argument and she kind of undermined other voice actors who are in that kind of position you know so i sort of like i ended up in a situation where it's kind of like well I, i'm surprised that she would lie like that but also yeah. i think it's important that she's still brought it brought it forward because it did create a conversation around voice actors being paid more and i think they should be paid more um Absolutely. all devs Absolutely. should probably okay. be paid more and ceos mm -hmm. should be paid a lot can less um Absolutely. you look yeah. at bobby now, Kotick's now, salary and it's, it's real obscene. quick it makes for, you sick. for those who want to know the, the the what what he means by lies by omission if you look at the very last statement here he said the final the final offer to do the whole game with a flat payout was four thousand dollars the omission part was per session there should have been per session right here yeah, yeah. because it wasn't 4,000 flat rates for the whole thing. It was 4,000 flat rate per session. And I think it was what, four sessions or five sessions, something like yeah, that. Yeah. But I mean, even still, right? No, this let's be clear here. Yes. And, and, and I, I agree with Jez. I completely agree. Right? She ruined her own argument by that omission, but she, she didn't need to ruin her argument by that omission. Or she could have said four or five sessions and still we'd be behind her because this game makes millions upon millions of dollars and you are the voice of said, said uh, character, the titular character, right? So you'd think as the game's success rises, so will yours. So I honestly, I, I agree with Jez uh, absolutely that 
this did not need to happen. You could have just been honest about the way you, what was happening there, and we would have still been behind you, right? Everybody, you disagree on that? Um, I mean, I get it, and you know, it's the way that the information was laid out, but I do feel like it's kind of weird um, that kind of because at the end of the day, I think sixteen to twenty thousand dollars is still underpaid. Mm -hmm. for uh, for a video game that is making that kind of money right mm -hmm. like you if if you made that on the everborn game then sure <laughs> maybe that's too much uh but but uh, on on a game like bayonetta you know mm -hmm. but it, but again i said when i first heard this this feels like open contract negotiation right let me uh embarrass them and then they're gonna have to pay me some shut up money and then i end up getting the money that i wanted in the first place Sure, yeah, she, but the she way didn't, she that, didn't think of the Chris, the, the whole Jennifer Hale uh, side, side hustle that that came and screwed her pooch. But okay, continue. Right. So, but again, it did it did feel weird. I didn't like even in the beginning. I said, you know, um, I don't know if you need to be telling people to boycott this game and choose nope. you or the game. That didn't really feel right to me Absolutely. from mm -hmm. the beginning. Because you can make your case without saying that, right? Without being, like, be, you don't, being you don't all You don't have to go off and say, okay, now mm -hmm. stick the knife in. You could say, this is what I was offered and, and whatever. But yeah. like, you try working for, for 16, uh, for minimum wage, and you'll end up getting more than $16,000 for that amount of time. So I, don't, I just don't think it's a lot of money. And it it's it's weird to me, but I'm not gonna jump on her because Jez, what you talked about with Kiefer Sutherland, right? Um, we've seen that in the in the Hollywood animation world where they kind of made this shift. And funny enough, it started with Aladdin and uh, uh, um, Robin Williams as the genie, right? Mm, I remember that. And, yes, and and he they really kind of marketed that movie around him being in it. And he wasn't happy about that because he knew he was taking away work from skilled voice actors where that's their profession, right? And because your face is not on screen, people can just replace you and then they move towards, you know, screen actors or big names that may not have all the voice Especially training Will that Smith, you do. Like, what the heck? So, so <laughs> the, don't, don't get me started. So, uh, but my point is, <laughs> um, once, unless you are uh, Jen Taylor, which is the voice of Cortana, or mm -hmm. you're Steve yep, right Downs, right. or mm -hmm. you are uh, the voice of Kratos, for the most part, people don't know who you are, even though you voice kind of iconic roles. And I think the industry could do better as surfacing people as the, this is the voice of this character you love. But the reason they don't do that is because they don't want to pay them, yeah. right? If if they if if they do another Halo game and, and Jen Taylor is not the voice of hey, of Cortana, it's gonna be blood oh, in the streets. And that'd she knows be a Travis that. democracy. Oh my god! Right. <laughs> so you, you have to everywhere. you have to find a way to get your name out there mm -hmm. because really the 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 game Shoot. developer or publisher uh, is to, not to your point. Real quick, Everborn. The fact that the fact the fact that Steve Downs wasn't even the voice of Master Chief in the show when he had his helmet on was cause for some consternation among yeah, but that was public, stupid. So. We, I don't want to talk about that. that was see, a stupid see, see, even that gets you going. <laughs> that was just as stupid as being mad that he took off his helmet. It's stupid, <laughs> and I'm not arguing that fact. Anyway, uh -huh. the point is, um, I am not going to jump on uh, the actress who was underpaid because of the four thousand dollars number versus 16. we're not at she didn't get six figures right they like they paid her or offered to pay her less than twenty thousand dollars for the whole game i'm sorry that's not enough yeah no absolutely and and that's why it's so strange that she felt the need to omit certain things to get her point across because i feel like she had an open and shut case without that omission Right. So, and because of that, now the story has a, an asterisk, which is unfortunate. It should stay on the fact that these folks aren't paid enough. Right. But now there's an asterisk of, oh, well, she lied or she omitted certain certain things to make herself look better. You know, so and now it's everybody's like, this is my one for the day. Everybody's shitting mm -hmm. on her and <laughs> siding with Platinum Games and Nintendo. Yeah. That's where we are. And I'm not going to do it. I'm sorry. Yep. 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 Absolutely. That's all hey. I have to say about that. Shout out to Mr. Splendiferous, who's in the spot. Welcome, sir. He said, I heard Jess Corden's favorite game was Bug Snacks. 
<laughs> I want to try that. It looks interesting. I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> you you should get you should get Randall Thor to play that on stream. I, I mean, is there a Patreon tier? Come on now. I want to I want to I want to partake in that. I'd love yeah, to see that. We should make one. We should make one. They Absolutely. should do a Bug Absolutely. Snacks grounded crossover. Hmm. That is an interesting idea. Although grounded is wants wants to be realistic and and Bug Snacks has like you know f- French fries for fingers, but. That's neither here nor there. Okay, yeah, but let's, I mean, let's if you turn story. down the spiders, they kind of look uh, you true. Know. True, you turn it down, then they turn into French fries themselves. I do hear you on that. Where what you turn the the the, the accessibility dial down, and instead of the monsters being real, they turn into the bug snacks monsters. Think That'd about it. I'm telling <laughs> you, that'd be pretty funny. It's pretty Actually. genius. Uh, pretty Microsoft, genius, yes. Sony, Coleman. <laughs> you know what? Let's get to the big story. You know, we we we. We all talk about it. Mr. Everborn Saga literally spends days just wet weeding through the freaking ABK d- documents just to find new nuggets of craziness to discuss. But before we get into that final topic and, and we, 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 we get Mr. Jez Corden's uh, opinions on this, we would once again thank you guys so much for being here. There's so many folks in the chat, uh, over 100 folks watching live. Thank you so much. Hit that like button if you haven't done so. You know, Consider subscribing. As we as we mark slowly but surely towards that thousand subscribers, which we want to do before the end of this year. Thank you guys so much again. The chat the chat is pretty lively, and they're making fun of both of us. I thank you guys so much. <laughs> yes, I see y'all in there. But anyway, no Mr. Everborn today. Saga, I, I have not seen Slow Mo here today. No, I have He's not. Hiding. I have not. I, I need to shout out to, to, to Slow Mo. He he asked me for some, for some assistance on some some Steam Deck stuff. We'll we'll get into that one. But anyways. Mr. Everborn Saga, I know you have been digging through the regulatory body date data. <laughs> I know this whole thing with the ABK stuff and blah, blah, blah. It's the gift that keeps on giving. You know, I, I hear that 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 um, what is the latest and greatest? We now have Mr. Phil Spencer heading towards Brussels right now with with, with some with some uh, other high, high, uh, high class lawyers trying I to thought that fight he was back. going to the UK. Oh, no, I'm uh, sorry. Yes, it was that. the UK. It was the UK. You're absolutely right. Absol- absolutely right. It, it is the UK. So. This week, more nuggets of information is, are, are being doled out. We're hearing about what uh, Call of Duty now, which which it is news, true, but I kind of I'm not surprised by that news, and I I am more surprised at the fact that a lot of folks are are up in arms and surprised by it. The, the and, and by this I mean we heard the latest news, which which was part of the documents that that Microsoft has released the the back and forth and all of that with the CMA that. Uh, uh, Call of Duty as one of the stipulations of the deal. While that marketing deal is in place with Sony, they also cannot put the game in Game Pass. I heard that and thought, duh. Well, obviously, well, well, what did you well, think? Let me, of one? Yeah. let me add another layer to that. Yeah, right? please, please. From what we know of the Capcom deal and now the Deathloop deal, mm-hmm. the reason why Deathloop was rolled out the way it was is because mm-hmm. um, the it, the contract stipulated that if you were going to put it in another streaming service, you had to also offer it to Sony. Okay. Right. So does does the Activision contract say similar have similar language to where one you can't put it in Game Pass, but if you do, it's going to be a year later, and you have to also offer it to us first. So I, and I say all that to say, does it extend past the twenty twenty four deadline to where they can put it in uh, Game Pass? Jess, what do you think? It's it's hard to say. Like all of these deals are kind of like bespoke, and they're all different and stuff like that. And you know, the, obviously, Call of Duty. If the if the deal goes through, obviously, the future of Call of Duty is that it's on Game Pass, right? Um, but it also depends what concessions the Sony wins from the CMA. I think Sony knows that they can't block the deal, but I think what they're angling for is is some kind of concession. For example, like terms. If, yeah, terms. They, they, the fact that they keep bringing up Call of Duty and Game Pass will hurt us, they'll hurt us, or hurt us. Maybe the concession they're looking for is that Call of Duty can never go in Game Pass, you know, um, which would be hilarious if they, if they actually achieve that concession, because that's not exactly good for consumers, is it? You know, if they if the com- if the competition um, competitions regulator is all about getting consumers a better deal, and they they manage to block block it coming to the ten pound a month Game Pass subscription, it's kind of the opposite of what their what their job is, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's just sort of um, it's just going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. You know, will, will they win? 
who knows? You know, but I, I don't think. That, I don't wouldn't think wouldn't you think that's also a very dangerous precedent to set? That yes, it's true that it's it's a large sum of money, but at the end of the day, you know that that wouldn't that make a, a new world where where uh, in, in, with capitalism is as it is, you can buy what you want to buy. But we get it. We get to tell you how to do or not to do with what you, what it is that you what you're buying. It, it's a very dangerous. It seems like a very unusual step to take. So, please so, go ahead, everyone. Um, there's there's a few kind of like um, layers to that question, and mm. and you know we're we're talking about capitalism, but it it isn't the UK. I know they're capitalists, but isn't it? Aren't they still kind of socialist? No, no, <laughs> it's for sure. UK socialist, sure. are you mad? It's for sure. <laughs> no, he, he's talking about the queen and all the pomp and circumstance and all of that. I'm talking about that sweet free health care that we want over here in the US. That's what I'm talking about. That's that's oh, not socialist, that's just basic logic. Basic yeah. common sense. The, the, yes, I agree. The, 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 the NHS operates in a capitalistic way because the mentality is. They make you he as healthy as possible, so you can keep contributing to capitalism. You can't, you can't grease the wheels of capitalism if half your country is dead and sick. So you know the the social, the way they the way they run the NHS is that it's an investment f to benefit capitalism. So it's it's hardly what I'd call socialist, um, especially the way they're running it these days. But um, but the UK like. The UK is weird, you know, there's different sort of, there's different pockets of the civil service that probably do prefer a heavy handed governmental approach, even though the government itself is quite on the opposite side, fiscally conservative, you know, but the civil service at large is oftentimes probably not so fiscally conservative. Because the way the the way the UK is structured is it is quite different to America, but it, it is capitalism at the end of the day. But it's it's there's a lot of regulation. There's way more regulations in America across everything, you know. Um, but I honestly I think it's really strange this whole Activision stuff with the CMA and how much how much problems they're causing creating over it. Um, I I like I'm. You know, my I, I said on the Xbox Two podcast that like I've I've got sort of like a conspiratorial mentality towards it, and that I think it is ideological in some way. It's ideological, like the CMA, like they want to flex their clout or something in the world in a world where Britain's Britain's global political footprint is diminished because of Brexit. They want they want to be seen as you know, oh, we're still relevant, you know, the UK is still a relevant market and you still have to do what we say kind of thing. They flex their muscles over Facebook recently, blocking the Giphy deal, uh, you know, and, you know, that, that lobbying group, the US Chamber of Commerce or whatever, they came out with a big criticism of it. Um, you know, obviously they're not, they're not a government body, but there's, it's still, it was still strange to see that kind of mudslinging, you know, acro across a, a, a small regulator in the UK and honestly they've they've never had this kind of publicity ever I'd never heard of the CMA before this and if you go if you go and look on their Twitter feed all the other posts they made they got like two likes three likes zero replies and they get involved in this and they kind of feel like oh we're actually important and relevant now you know so I want to believe they're taking an impartial look at it but when you actually read their their disposition and analyze it and it's it doesn't it feels ideological to me it, it, you know it, it, so I agree with you on that point. It does, at least in the in the words that they've released so far, it feels like that they've made a decision and then backed their way into it with logic, right? Um, meaning we've decided we don't like this thing or we want to say we don't like this thing. Now let's find some reason to make that true. And I think the work people would be less frustrated with the process had they focused on things like cloud and even subscription services. But it seems like the large majority of their focus, if you read it, that they're, I mean, Microsoft points this out, they seem five times more concerned with not touching a hair on Sony's head than actual customers, right? It's, it's, the, it's, it's the large focus of what they talked about. And it's, but I'm saying all of this to also then turn around and say, I think this is much to do about nothing. 
And I think the deal is going to go through much in the same way Brazil went through. And I think when you actually have to put pen to paper and um, um, and actually back up what you're saying with numbers, which is what phase two is about, they even mm -hmm. say it is a higher bar. I think this goes the same way that Brazil goes because we're in the middle of fog of war. And if you are correct, Jess, and they are pliable, you know who's going to be doing the plying? Yeah. It's going to be the big money team, right? So I, I think I, in the same way we saw the unions and Elizabeth Warren come out in the U.S. and say this is going to be bad for workers and we don't like it. And then they turned around and had the union on their side a couple of months later, literally recommending the deal to the president. I think you're going to see something similar here. So, I, you know, um, <laughs> if they are, if they are uh, um, buyable, uh, then I think if you want the deal to go through, that's good news because I don't think uh, Sony could afford to outbid um, <laughs> corruptible people. Let's put it that way. So, but the but 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 the 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 other piece of it is um, I don't even think there's going to be any concessions around telling Microsoft that that they have to keep and I, not, that's not to say that they won't keep it that way. I'm of the mind that they will re, they'll keep it there um, and reassess at the end of the generation and see if they've moved enough people over. And once they move enough people over to where it 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 doesn't hurt as much as it would today, then they'll mm -hmm. they'll make decisions about that. But if it, and until until they can effectively do that without really hurting the game and the market for it, I think it stays on PlayStation, right? But regarding the CMA. I would not worry about it, right? And I think that the if you look at the people that are reviewing the phase two, and I know it's also the CMA, but it is a different group within the CMA, and their response to Microsoft's acquisition was about 76 pages for their phase two referral decision. That's the full text. And people compare this to Giphy. Their response to Giphy was, uh, with Facebook was 400 pages, right? They were light on detail, and there's something very specific here. In paragraph 78 oh, of the um, the uh, mm -hmm. the full text on, mm -hmm. on the CMA side, they say that for phase one, they have decidedly gone with a qualitative analysis versus a quantitative analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've ever done like statistics and read papers or you're in college right now, all the college kids know this. Um, and I only know it because I just looked it up. I'm not smart. Uh, uh, but qua qualitative analysis means you basically have a hypothesis and you're in your fields and you want to mm -hmm. draw a narrative towards this the conclusion that you want to come to by giving parallels. Cart before uh, the horse. Yes. Yeah. Quantitative means, hey, statistically, this is what we're talking yeah. about. Going, going the where the evidence here, leads you. Microsoft wants a quantitative analysis and i think they will get that in phase two and they won't really be able to make the arguments that um uh that that they're talking about in, in phase one and also you have to think in terms of social like like social social facebook actually is a behemoth right it is not yeah. the same thing Right. You you yeah. look at all of social. If you want to count Twitter as social. Right. Um, it is. Right. But is Twitter anywhere near Instagram and Facebook? Well, well, right? th think it's, about it. The, the, I do. Although and I hear you have a born, although I still do agree that 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 the, the Jiffy thing was weak. Uh, I, I agree that it was a weak thing. But if you look at, at what Jiffy offers, like what they do. I mean, people don't know their website. People don't go there. But it's literally a keyboard shortcut on almost every Android phone. Like if you, on Samsung devices, on standard Android, if you go and you want to find a GIF, chances are when you search the GIF uh, database, you're searching Giphy, right? So if, 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 if to your point, if, if Facebook were to purchase that, they basically own keyboards, like keystroke keyboards, across all of android what you're typing they can see because literally giphy is part of keyboards everywhere 
right? So right. I do see that you it know would although, be akin to purchasing WhatsApp. Kind of, yes, kind of. So I do hear why they they were more strong arm in that direction. And you're right that they kind of just don't like them. So whatever whatever you want to do, the answer is no. And we're going to figure out how we make that no make sense. But the answer is no. So so it sounds, you know. And and the other thing I want to say about this is your your article, Jez, that you wrote mm-hmm. that you wrote about. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. A potentially vindictive Microsoft, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, yeah. Before we go there, let's let's thread that needle real quick because uh, uh, Victor Alistein asked the question, which I wanted to bring up. What if they decide to sell Activision King, right, uh, because of COD, right, and, and instead they keep uh, they keep uh, Blizzard and King and sell off Activision because uh, Activision is too hot, right, and and it's causing too much too much uh, consternation in the market. But exactly to your point, to to the to the article that you wrote, Jez, more to that point, like. What in what in this hypothetical universe where they don't close the deal on this, whether it be because they're stopped or they decide to change their minds or whatever, do you really, really think that we live in that world where then Microsoft goes, okay, so you're te- and I thought it was a very interesting hypothesis on your part. You know, you're teaching us how to do business, right? By saying that everything we've done up until now has not been good, but everything they're doing now is good. So I guess we're gonna do what they do now. Right. You really think that's where th- we're, we're headed with that? I mean, I can't see it any other way. You know, mm. and so a lot of people criticize that article or that take, but it's like, why is it okay for Sony to do that, but not Microsoft? You know, it's, it's kind of, I kind of, that's the bit that I don't understand. Like, if regulators are literally sitting there and saying, look, Microsoft, you can't do this. You can't buy companies, you know, um, anymore uh, or whatever. Uh, because the 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 climate around big tech has changed which that's the hype that's the hypothesis really is like is are we are we in a are we in a f- ideological phase where things are just getting blocked arbitrarily because you know regulators and government bodies have realized the amount the sheer volume of damage that facebook's dominance has done to the fabric of society frankly that's the speculation like if this is ideological and i'm not saying it is it's just speculative if it is ideological um are we going to see other deals and other acquisitions microsoft attempts get blocked and if that is the hypothetical reality then they'll have no choice but to copy sony's business model which is to money hat things or 10 cents business model which is to take you know, significant sh- shares in different companies to influence their influence their direction, their marketing, and stuff like that. At the end of the day, Microsoft's in it to win it. You know, they are in it. They're all in. They're in it to win it. Like the Xbox, Microsoft gaming division. It's not just the Xbox anymore. Phil Spencer's the CEO of Microsoft Gaming. They're all in on this stuff, right? So they they're not gonna they're not gonna sit down and when they if they lose this acquisition. Um, they're not going to sit down and just be like, "Oh well, Sony won." They're gonna, they're gonna be pissed. Yeah. And, you know, uh, P- you know, I, jo- I joke with Rand that like Phil's a nice guy and stuff, but Phil's <laughs> has a ruthless business streak too. You know. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, uh, uh, Jez, I keep saying this. Everybody's a nice guy until you mess with their money. Uh, right? Yeah, you mess with their seventy billion dollars. Like what? <laughs> but, but but to that end, Jez, this is a question I always wanted to ask you, and I feel like this gets kind of lost on everybody because we're looking at this in terms of you know Microsoft and Sony and the CMA. But if if Sony is effectively able to get this deal blocked, which I don't think they will, I don't even think there'll be major concessions. But if that happens. You've literally just cost Activision seventy billion dollars, and their stock is going to tank. And I and, and and I make that point because if we look at the market from a year ago or almost a year now when this thing was announced, the entire stock market in terms of tech and gaming publishers have gone down, have dropped between from where they were in January uh, between uh, twenty. And fifty percent. Now that's uh, so. That means uh, Apple. That means Microsoft. That means Ubisoft, which they're the ones that are down fifty percent. Um, uh, Square Enix, Capcom. Everyone is down, right? And I know Tencent's some people lost six hundred and fifty billion in value. Right, right. The only um, publisher that has gone up in in value even though it's not at the 95 that they're offered, they're like 73, 74 right now, 
is Activision, right? So they they're 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 holding steady because people know that the buyout is on the horizon. Mm-hmm. What do we think will happen to that stock? Should the deal if, if fall the buyout through? fails? So oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. It, right, it will crash, and I don't care what anyone says. The everyone is down. This is only up because there's there's a light at the end of the tunnel. If that light dims or goes out, that's it. You have now crippled what you're calling your most important partner. What happens to Sony and Activision should they successfully block the, this deal? I don't know what their end game is, right? Yeah. Your end game is, okay, um, I'm going to cut off my nose to spite my face because Activision now, I, I, they, I'm just saying they can forget about that marketing. Yeah. Deal that they have. I can't have it exclusive <laughs> anymore. So now no one can ever have it anymore again because after this deal, there is just no way that you go back to the way things used to be at all, no matter what happens, right? And that's like kind of the tone of my article. You know, people took mm. exception like with the with the fact that you know they said I was threatening Sony, but I wasn't. <laughs> if you if you read the title, it says they people might were CMAing on on their yeah. behalf, huh? I'm just yeah, <laughs> I said they might live to regret it. It wasn't mm. a warning; it was just the reality. You know, the 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 amount of boat rocking they're gonna do if they end up do blocking this deal. Yeah. is going to be cataclysmic it's going to be earth shattering you know if they let this deal go through pretty much the status quo will be preserved they'll keep call of duty they'll lose the marketing deal and yeah the, they'll probably lose some sales to xbox game pass but it's not going to be that bad you know it's they're still going to be they've still got the biggest install base they're still gonna all those people are kind of locked in anyway you know cross play yeah it exists but it still doesn't really exist you know it's still more convenient to play with a friend on the same platform you know it's not we're not we don't we're not in the true cross play era just yet it's still more convenient to play with a friend on the same platform and um you know no one no one's gonna switch platforms on the existing install base just because Sony got Call of Duty. But, you know, you have to believe that, you know, Microsoft's going to invest in putting out more games under Activision Blizzard. They're going to invest in probably putting more games on PlayStation, which is going to be better for PlayStation fans too. You know, I can see Crash Bandicoot coming back. I could see a StarCraft shooter being made, all that kind of stuff. I could see World of Warcraft coming to PlayStation eventually, you know, um, and maybe that had happened anyway. I don't know, but ultimately, I think like they're gonna there'll be a massive court case, and all their shady business practices will be fully exposed for everyone to see. And is is that really worth it? Is that going to be and, worth it? To and them? are you I thinking that even after that shady business practices and all that stuff comes out? Still, there's a world where, after all that said, the CMA goes, yeah, we don't care. Still blocked. I think um, I think Microsoft will fight it tooth and nail. They'll appeal and appeal and appeal and appeal to get it through. You know, I, I part of me thinks, like, Facebook just sort of walked away from the Giphy deal yeah. because they were like, we can save money here. It's not that big of a deal. It's only GIFs at the end of the yep. day. We can make our own GIFs platform. It's not like it's not like Giphy owns GIFs. No. You know, they don't own the rights to these meme GIFs, do they? Yeah. They literally don't. You know, so part of me thinks like Facebook was just like, it's it's not worth it to, for us to fight fight this in court. Because they probably would have they probably would have won already. They already won one appeal. Who's to say they wouldn't win another, win another appeal or another appeal or another appeal? But I ain't a lawyer. I don't know for sure how the mechanics of that system works. But I do know Microsoft is going to be more willing to get this pushed through than Facebook would have been willing to get Giphy. Because who cares about Giphy at the end of the day? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's just irritating that we're sort of... Sony's kind of like... It almost feels like Sony's playing for time. Which makes yeah. sense, you know, they're defending Which, their yeah, business. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and they, and they want, to, they want here, to tick over into a new contract, probably. Yeah, it, it seems like they're, 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 they're on the hook trying to get them to at least be willing to, to have another conversation, and, and that's why they're not ready to, to just go, okay, so Microsoft yeah. said it, so we'll, we'll keep it going. What do you think, on that same line, in the same general conversation, what do you think about this part here where – all of a sudden, which we knew this was going to happen. I, I personally think that's the reason why 
there, there are rumors and speculation all over the place. Why is Microsoft uh, uh, putting all these details into their website stuff that CMA already knows? I thought, hey, it's because they're they're trying to to uh, convince you, the public, of their intentions. You know, there's there's rumors and speculation that oh, uh, now Sony could have had a, a state of play or whatever or, or a proper show, and they didn't. Oh, you know, they're trying to keep keep themselves under the radar from the CMA. I think that's a ridiculous take because anything the CMA wants to know that's even secret, they have no choice but to share it with them. Probably the CMA knows the next exclusives coming out because it's on paper and they have to share that stuff. But who are they trying to convince that they're woe is me? You, the public, right? And why is all that? Because now the CMA is asking for your opinions on it. So if they've skewed you enough, then the pitchforks come out. They're literally trying to, to, to manipulate the public in one, both of them, right? PlayStation and Microsoft, in one way or another. Hence, all the public details they're sharing that you go, who are you, who are you talking to? This tells me they were talking to us all along. What, what do you think of that? Ah, uh, man, I think it's... Uh... I think it's kind of hilarious that they they're asking the public for their opinions um because it's just going to be a load of fanboy drivel for the most part Absolutely. on both sides you know you're going to get xbox fanboy drivel you're going to get playstation fanboy drivel mm -hmm. and it's just going to be like you know a load of fud and people with an agenda not being honest about it you know um so yeah it, it's sort of maybe it'll give them fuel to push an agenda you know they'll be like well we got this many emails saying this with this sentiment or this many emails with negative sentiment towards the deal of course there's going to be more emails with negative sentiment towards the deal because there's more playstation gamers you know you know uh which is kind of why i almost like you know wonder like you know what what a pc gamers think of this because no one's no one's talking about like how this affects blizzard on pc because that's where Blizzard's, Blizzard's community is at the end of the day, his PC, you know. You There's not a single strange, mention of PC by, gaming. By, by the way, the, you're so right. Like, they they literally, they didn't mention Candy Crush. They did, they, there's no mention of Overwatch. There's no mention of anything on PC or mobile. They seem there's, squarely focused yeah. on the effects to PlayStation. And it's, it's, it's sort of like... It's emblematic of Sony's dominance as a platform. The fact that they're not even considering this other stuff. They're not considering the fact that we'll probably get Overwatch on Steam. You know, this will benefit consumers because they'll be able to choose where they play Overwatch. You know, you know yeah. I mean, no, no, no one cares about any of that stuff. Yeah, because yeah. Nintendo is apparently not a competitor according to the CMA. It's ridiculous, right? And there's no, there's no mention of. Um, you know, Microsoft bringing some serious competition to mobile, breaking the duopoly of Google Play and iOS, um, because maybe they can offer a Candy Crush on a mobile app that doesn't have all the horrible microtransactions in the Google Play Store, offer people a better deal, and offer people real competition in mobile space, which is absolutely desperately needed. You know, the, the fact that Go Apple and Google are basically allowed to push up costs and gouge developers because of the lack of competition in mobile, that's exactly the thing that they should be looking at. Not this Call of Duty stuff, but and it's I because agree. they're incompetent. I mean and they're I mean, not doing their job properly. Is one it because they're there. competent? Like, is it really? Is like because people have been saying that, and this this is the, the end of the topics. By the way, we're, we're about to hit to the outros, but people have been saying that. Oh, it's incom because it's one or the other, right? Uh, we have we have some in the community that go, look, this is just corruption, right? And then others go, ah, they're incompetent. The end result is being the same. Where where do you fall? Is it incompetence or corruption, <laughs> or is it some of both? I don't know. I. I don't it's think tough, it's man. corruption. Someone, okay. someone would know it'd get mm -hmm. out. The British, the British establishment is so damn leaky. You know, I don't think, I don't think it's corruption. Okay. I could so be it's naive. Just Maybe it is. Naivete. You know, I think, it, I think it is probably mostly naivety and mm -hmm. and incompetence. You know, but that's what stage two is meant to be for, right? Stage two is meant to be for. Um, the 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 serious adults looking at the. The, the quantitative evidence, as uh, Everborn said. And um, it's... Uh, timeline, 
2023 uh, March and there's your take two. And well, the, and by well, the way, folks watching, this is the web the official website that that's basically documenting it from from the CMA's perspective. You can go there, see all the things that have been said, the official documents, all the the PDFs and everything else, as well as the timelines for phase two. Continue. I will say the only thing mm -hmm. good about the British government is the website. Mm. The British government website is very, very good. <laughs> mm. Very um, but that's well it. explained, out there, tells you exactly what you need to know, yeah. all the pieces of the puzzle. It's, it's quite concise. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that the, the interesting thing here, uh, and again, I think once you get to the in-depth analysis, um, that is where the rubber meets the road and they actually have to prove these things, right? Uh, I think phase one says this could happen. And I know it's worded in a way like they already made up their mind, but I think once the, the evidence is presented, um, um, it, it will turn out the same way uh, that, that Brazil turned out. And just to, that timeline that you're showing, so people should understand, January is, I think, the next time we'll have something significant from the CMA because that's when they'll make their initial assessment and ask for whatever concessions they want or undertakings. And then at that point, if Microsoft agrees to those undertakings, they can they can move forward right away. And if 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 Microsoft has um, you know issues with those things, that's when you go into February and the final decision by March. And if they don't like the final decision at that point, that's when Microsoft says, "Hey, we want to either accept that or go and take it to CAT or." Or whoever else, but I think I think January will come around, and you'll find out that they'll come to some kind of agreement. And and again, those undertakings are either going to be behavioral or structural. And I I don't think any of us care about the behavioral piece. If they're behavioral um, undertakings, that would be like, well, um, you have to offer this thing to PlayStation for ten years. Since you said you were going to do it, it doesn't matter. And I think they take that, right? If, if, if it's if it's structural, then that says you can't own this, and for us to approve it, you need to um, do something like only allow COD to be published by a third party publisher of our choosing, which will probably be some manufactured uh, UK Consumer. publisher. Right mm -hmm. or or consortium and thing like that, and then mm -hmm. they will decide how to dole this out. Uh, behavioral says you can't put this in Game Pass for this amount of time. All those things. So I think behavioral will be will be Microsoft will be fine with structural with or will be where the issues is. But where we are now, I I I, I get all of this, and it the reason I understand why it's frustrating, even though I think when we have the end of it, it will go the way we expect, is that at every point, Microsoft tried to answer their issues and bring these things up. The CMA basically said, we don't care. So no. what they said is, hey, the market is bigger than Sony and Co Call of Duty is not needed because Nintendo is right here. They said, we don't care. Um, they said, hey, even in the hypothetical scenario, which is completely bullshit, um, if everyone on PlayStation that plays COD left the PlayStation, the PlayStation would still have a higher market share. They said, we don't care, right? Absolutely. They said, yeah. um, you know, you could use um, the Windows operating system to uh, foreclose your rivals or, or make the competitive landscape more difficult because you could run your cloud games from Windows that other people have to license to you. Microsoft says the Xbox doesn't run it. on Windows, yeah, right. nor that's do right. you need Windows to run this thing. And it's built out in its own servers. They said, we don't care. We don't care. Absolutely. Microsoft says Sony in this region is triple the size of us, nearly. Right, worldwide, they're triple the size of us in the UK alone, they're double the size of us. The CMA says we don't care. So, at every one of their points, Sony still ends up on top. And it, and I'm just talking, this is the quantitative analysis. The CMA has said we don't care because anything that makes it s slightly more difficult for Sony they have taken a hostile approach for to it in phase one. 
And I don't think that's protecting competition. I think that is that is protecting the exact amount of money that Sony is making today. And they're yeah. they're conflating that with a substantial lessening of competition. But I think this will be rectified in 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 phase. See, two. see now, and because of what you're describing here, and and you you summed it up absolutely beautifully. Because of what you're describing here, although I too consider it more incompetence than corruption, I do understand when people see all of that and and go, yeah, they, they, somebody's somebody's on the take, right? Because it's just a mountain of evidence and logic that you just keep shooing away with no real explanation as to why uh, for, but my my feeling on it is we should wait till till january and we get the provisional decision once they've actually looked at the data then we can make uh assertions of incompetence or corruption because look look at the people on the board here in, of the cma they 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 don't know the gaming industry and they've reached out to consultants and market participants. And the only market participant that complained is Sony for obvious reasons. So that's what they're going to look at as the complaint. Now we have to prove those things and those things have to be borne out. So I, I don't want to fault the CMA yet. Let's have their actual decision and then we can say it's BS or not. But until I then, you, you have to I let the process that. play out. And I don't think we should assign incompetence mm -hmm. or um uh corruption until we see that first uh full decision uh, so so until we see the decision you don't think that everything that has come here come up until now can be determined one way or another you, i like, think it's it reads like garbage yeah but I, I but again i have to assign fog of war to it as i keep okay. saying okay Okay. Let me get the decision. We will. And then we'll, I will we'll keep I will going. We'll keep going because Everborn started like viciously angry when this whole thing started, and then he's he's been going through the stages of well, maybe we don't know. Oh, fog of war. And and as the as more and more of the CMA's conversation has have uh, the statements have been coming out, you know, your 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 positions have been changing a little bit, nuanced, which is good. We'll we'll see where we go once once I've been we reading hear a lot about. of these documents myself, mm -hmm. and I've been listening to a lot of Hogue Law. Okay, so, eight I've, hour I've podcast, more, whole lot, like insane, uh, man. Uh, <laughs> conservative approach to my reaction okay. to this thing. Okay, but I think it's going to go through that. no concessions, nothing that we care about anyway. He he's he's Babe Ruth pointing to his, his square. He's calling it okay, okay. And I, I appreciate the, that. The hilarious piece about that uh -huh. is that that deal that Jim Ryan called inadequate, mm -hmm. he is going to be begging for. Because he won't have any concessions to protect it. All right. the bluster well, you know is going to go away. You know what, Jez? I will let you close this out. <laughs> Do you think this will end with no concessions as well? Or are you thinking that somehow Sony at some point, even in the littlest way, will draw some blood before this is before this is done? No, nah, I think this ends with no concessions. I think the oh, only man. concession really is that they get things delayed. Maybe they end up getting a contract extension with Activision before they go acquired. I don't know. I don't think I don't think they'll win a concession via regulators, and I think it will go through. I think they're just playing for time, and that's the only concession really is that it'll just take longer for it all to go through. But um, yeah, it will go through eventually. It's too much riding on it. And once it goes through and they do their round table, before I said Phil should wear the Stop Snitching t-shirt, but now once it goes through Here with no concessions, he uh -huh. should wear a t-shirt that says yesterday's price is not, not today's, today's price. price. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> See, this, this man likes to wrap intelligence around a lot of slanderousness, but you know what? On that note, Mr. Jess Corden, we appreciate you being here, good sir. It has been too much fun chatting with you, going through all these balls and strikes. Please, please, please say you'll come back and, and join us when there's more to discuss and there's craziness in the world because you know there will be more of that. Tell the yeah, fine definitely. people all the great things that you do online. Any new articles we should be, be, we should be on the lookout for? I'm actually writing an article about the Duo Duo 2 next week. I'm Ooh, planning on doing a video of the, the new Discord features for Xbox and the, the new mm -hmm. Clips Captures app. We, um, we should have talked about that a little bit. Too bad. There's, yeah. I'm still with you, sir. No Clip Champ. It's terrible. I still use, I use Clip Champ with my Office 365 subscription. Why is it not on Xbox? I don't know. Anyway, yeah. please. 
I think it's a RAM thing with regards mm. to that, but at least like they've separated it out into its own app now, which means they can do they can do more updates on it without having to update the entire operating system. Um, we've seen Microsoft do this before, where they spin out features into into its own app to make the development cycle a little bit easier. But anyway, um, yeah, you can find me at windowscentral.com forward slash gaming um, or just windowscentral.com uh, on Twitter at just Corden J Z C O R D E N and. Uh, on the Xbox Two podcast, uh, XB, uh, the xb 2com and um, yeah, the man. Thanks Not very much Patreon, because you, you guys got the Patreon going too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Patreon.com forward mm-hmm. slash xb 2 as well. Um, yeah, I, thanks for having me, guys. It was very fun. Oh. I'll definitely come back if you have me. Appreciate you being here. This was awesome. Always, always appreciate your takes. Always, you know, throwing out the stuff that people want to hear. The, the conversations well, we, that we appreciate we your well. takes, except for the Sonic take. But but other oh, than no, that, no, 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 no. We appreciate yet. your takes fully, sir, including the Sonic take. You know, I and, disagree. And, and and there is a time we you you now know that bet. So keep that in the back pocket. We will. Oh no, we didn't explain that bet. I'm gonna let him go. You didn't let me explain that bet. Oh, go ahead, I go ahead. said mm-hmm. I don't. While I don't agree with Boom that it will be two to one, I said mm-hmm. Sonic Frontiers. Mm-hmm. This. For the rest of the year, so this holiday will yeah. outsell Ragnarok because you may it's say, everywhere. oh, it's Sonic, but it is everywhere. Yeah. And if we're looking at the PS4 base to say that um, uh, Ragnarok will outsell everything, guess what? The Switch is there. The Switch exists, and that will be the number one platform for Sonic Frontiers. So I think when you put it all together, being oh. only on the PS4 and PS5 versus no one with a that no one with an Xbox or a Switch can buy Ragnarok, so they will be buying Sonic that day. Mm-hmm. And then you have all the PC people. And again, Switch is the perfect platform for that game. So I think when it's all said and done. Sonic Frontiers will outsell God of War this holiday. But it all has <laughs> one big stipulation, and that is if. And when I say if, that is the that is the special Nick if. That is a mountain of if. If it's good. And this is by Team Sonic, who has, you know, oh, my, my, my wife is bringing me a drink. Thank you so much. Who has, like, a Team track Sonic record don't that's miss. all over. Don't miss. Sonic don't miss. Sonic the new the lost world, sir. I will just that say that game is but thank great. you so much. You just don't understand it yet. But that's it. Thank We're you so much for again. being here, Jess Corden. Mr. Everborn Saga. We will put all the details in the show notes. We've had a good time. Come back once again for the Sonic Slander when Sonic Frontiers comes out. <laughs> and we all know what's gonna happen when Sonic Frontiers comes out. When Mr. Everborn Saga has to eat, either eat crow. Or this turns into the Everborn Saga show for one day where he just gets completely ridiculous. But we will be here for that show. (laughs) But until next week, thank you so much for being here, Jez and and Mr. Everborn Saga. I have been your co-host, Mr. TKO Asante, Xbox, PlayStation, all the places you can find me. You will catch us next week. Have a good weekend. And, 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 you know, stay off the internet because Everborn's being very slanderous right now. And (laughs) Slow-Mo was too scared to come to the show today. Oh, stop it. 